You are live, Commissioner. Is there somebody here medically trained? Because if I get down, I might not get back up again. So, <laughs> oh. yeah, right. now from what I was told, I was expecting yesterday afternoon that 169 would be closed and scooters would be open. 169 would be closed. What? Scooters? scooters would be open. Oh, or scooters coffee? I was like, Greg, what's that have to do with? I, yeah, that I don't know about. Well, give us a few minutes and you'll find out. We don't know about scooters, but stay posted. The latest on scooters is it's opening up at 5.30 tomorrow morning. If you're interested. Yeah. Where are at? In Chinook. It's up there. In Chinook? In Chinook? On the corner of Plummer and Okay. I did see a scooters in Parsons. I've never heard of it before, but my daughter was in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine said, he knew the owner of one of them down there. Go by there and get coffee. So, well, my wife likes that fancy coffee, so it worked out pretty well. Other than my pocketbook. Seth's on his way. meeting to order the Board of County Commissioners of Neosho County. We're in Erie, Kansas. Regular public meeting date is 3-2-2021 at 2 o'clock. We're running a little bit behind. Sorry about that. Uh, start with the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation by Commissioner Westhoff. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Lord, thank you for all us being here today, and uh, I really want to thank uh, Commissioner Gilmore for the vaccines with the COVID. I think that was a, a good deal. I'm grateful for that. I've had a lot of compliments on that, and please help us do the right things for the county taxpayers and guide us in the right direction. Amen. 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 Anybody here for public comment, Heather? concern the wind farm contribution fund set up to keep monies paid by APEC separate from the normal funds operations and budgetary process of the county. It was clear from the beginning there is no plan in place for these monies other than for commissioners to disagree as to who should be the beneficiaries, how much, the intention of these funds, and keep the monies closely under their control. I find the process for doling out monies between Fair, Galesburg, and Sheen completely backwards. That is, requests for monies that can typically come before the commission in person. How much better for all concerned if the commission had opened up an application process that allowed for up to $100,000 for three beneficiaries with their plan on how to split 50-50 between safety and, and infrastructure for their community. It is clear that monies initially received from APEX were designated for certain categories per the, per the agreements. Road and Bridge, General Fund, Sheriffs, a Discretionary Fund, Safety, Engineering Fees. My ongoing concern has been that at any one time the balances of these designated funds seem to not be readily known. And through requests of transactions for that account, I found out why. There are no sub-accounts for these designated funds. Only one account with all the monies coming in and monies going out lumped together. 
In order to make sense out of the data I received, I went through the monies, the motions to determine the categories of these monies and how they should be attributed. And then went through the transaction register to come up with my own spreadsheet. To say that it's a bit of a mess is an understatement as I could not determine the balance for each designated category with any degree of certainty. My challenges and concerns. Due to lack of motions to approve the invoices for individuals hired to inspect the roads, I had to assume it deducted out of the engineering fund. For lack of clarity, the 50,000 and 20,000 received for additional roads used, assumed added to the engineering fund. The interest earned, assumed added to the general fund. And while the $3,000 payments to each of Galesburg, Thayer, and St. Paul Fire Departments were to come out of the safety monies, this payment, according to the motion, was to be, quote, reimbursed out of the Galesburg Pilot Fund. What does reimbursed, what does to be reimbursed mean, and what is a Galesburg Pilot Fund? And is this the reason Galesburg received that $7,000 less than Thayer and Chanute? If so, I can't get my math to add up. While the motion for the payments of 2000 each to Osage Mission and Osage Martin Museums and the Neosho County Fair Board made vague reference from the Wind Farm Pilot Fund, I assumed out of the discretionary fund as there are not enough funds left to cover the payments from the general fund. The motion also states, quote, a one-time yearly payment. What does this mean as it sounds contradictory? This data did not include payments for the road grader as being taken out of the road and bridge wind farm monies. While discussed, I find no motion to do so. My biggest dilemma was how to account for a $15,000 payment received from Apex in November of 2020. In questioning, it appears that an explanation of $5,000 each for county oversight, safety, and professional engineer came from direction of the commission due to lack of identifying information when the wire came in, other than ACARES as the center. The signed agreements contain an annual $5,000 a year for safety. However, the second annual payment had already been received in May of 2020. Why was there an additional $5,000 payment for safety in the same year? There is also a provision in the road use oversight, which reimburses the county up to $5,000 per year for costs to monitor and enforce the Apex's obligations, which I brought to the attention of the Commission over a year ago, but more in context of legal fees incurred by the County Council. In response from the County Council to the Treasurer upon my questioning concerning my detailed county oversight, his answer paraphrased was that it was reimbursement for the individuals hired as our road inspectors. Clearly, a difference of opinion exists. My concern is, what is the commissioner's interpretation of county oversight? Is it for reimbursement of road inspections, of which ample engineering funds already exist, or is it for reimbursement of legal fees for expenses burdened by county taxpayers for all aspects incurred by the wind farm? Is this reimbursement possibly for two years for 2019 and 2020? In closing, I request that the Commission consider adding sub accounts to the Wind Farm Contribution Fund in order to cap properly categorize and track monies coming in and monies going out so that one may know the balance remaining in each of these designated categories at any one given time. How else can the Commission state with confidence whether or not funds do or do not exist when requests are brought before you? Thank you, Shirley. Thanks, Shirley. Thank you. Good points. Right. I guess so. You're okay. nice on to get in there. Okay. 
Thank you. Good afternoon, and I'd like to start off by saying thank you for inviting me. It's a, excuse me, it's a privilege to be here, and I appreciate it. Um, I was asked to come here and give a few uh, high points about the 169 project that was just let this past month, and so that's what I'm going to be here to talk about. Um, I think the clerk or something, somebody asked if I had something to bring for a handout. I did not bring anything for a handout because I don't know really exactly what you're after. So after we go through this, if there's something you have questions on or a handout that I can help you with, let me know and we'll get it to you. Anyway, this is a project and it uh, starts down just a little bit south of, I believe it's 140th Road that you guys call it. And it goes all the way up to 1.7 miles into Allen County. It's about a 13.08 mile project. I thought maybe the best way to tackle this is I kind of found it if I can go through these points, it pretty much answers all our questions. Who, where, what, why, when, and how. So that's kind of how I tackled this. And it won't be real long. I'm pretty short. I'll just blow through it. But anyway, the who part, the who is you. Any users of 169 that, that go south to Chanute or come or uh, come north to Chanute or whatever, you're going to be, be affected by this project. Because again, like I said, it starts out down by uh, the Earlton turnoff south of there and it goes all the way up to into Allen County. So we're going to have it closed. And this is just a copy of the front page of our plans. And that's this. There's quite a bit going on on this project. It's going to be a really neat project, especially when it's done. And this is just a Google map of where it starts and where it ends, that red, red portion up there. Um, you guys taught me one thing when I was messing around. I'm not computer literate. I just barely can turn it on, as you saw. But when I was playing around with Google and I was drawing lines here and there and yonder, I'd close it, get back into it again, and I had the lines on it. So then I had to figure out how to raise them because I was drawing on Google's thing. But anyway, I did. So that's just a picture of it. This is, a, this is the work that we'll be doing on here. We'll be doing new grading, uh, portland cement concrete paving. We're going to patch the four-lane section. We're going to do some bridge repairs on a lot of the structures, uh, new guardrail seating, lighting, and pavement sign marking and new signage. So that's what the project entails. And this is part of the reason as to why. I mean, if you look out there, that's what we've got right now. And, We've been running around like a, a dog chasing its tail because we get one place patched and another place breaks loose on us. So that's the reason that this has come to fruition. The original thought from the contractor was we were going to, they wanted to start work on the 10th. And what that means, we'd have to close the south part of 169. So that was the date that they wanted to start work. Well, this was our original detour that we had lined out. Um, we were going to take 47 and go west, go on 75 north up to 39, and then bring 39 back into Chanute. Well, then this happened. And that changed the whole playing field. It's, uh, it's amazing how many people can get um, excited about something like that. In fact, on the 14th of January, I got a call from Darren Petrowski, who was, is my construction and materials engineer, and he said, hey, Wayne, he said, uh, Astro just called me, and they hit the bridge. And it was probably about 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. He says, are you in Chanute to where you can go look at it? And I said, no, I was working out of the house in Independence. And he said, well, I'm in Iowa, so I'll go look at it. I said, ah, don't worry about it, Darren. I said, They've called me a number of times before, and usually what happens is they overload a truck with rock, and it goes underneath the bridge and just takes out a small chunk of the bridge. Well, he went and looked at it, and then I got these pictures back. They took out a whole pier column. So that changed the planing scope. Now, this project was supposed to have been let in October. And due to various reasons, the main one being Monarch Cement Company, when we had the original plan, 
they were going to be closed to 39 Highway for the majority of the project. And they were not happy campers. And so we had, I met with, with the Monarch president, Mr. Weber, and we talked about things. And, and we finally, with Mike's help, and your bridge consultant and Mr. Weber, we got together and said, hey, Mr. Weber says, if you give me a six month closure, I can live with that. So then we got that worked out and then we went ahead and we let the project in, in, in January. But it took, took changing the detours. You see, before we were going west over to 30, over to 75 and then north, now we're going to go east over to 59, take 59 north. And that will be done for the first phase of the project. Again, the contractor wanted to start March 10th. And that just shows you how the phases. The project is broken up into two, two distinct phases. We have phase one and a phase two. Now I'll show you phase one and phase two are made up of different phases. I got more thingamajigs here than I know what to do with. I just got a new laser pointer. One of the gals I work with had me show them how to use it. Anyway, we're starting out, we have a phase 1A, and that is comprised of, of basically, they're going to move in there, and we're going to start at 35th Street. And we're going to go up to where the four lane starts. And that's all going to be reconstructed. Now where the four lane is, we're not going to reconstruct the four lane. When they reviewed it, they didn't think it was in that bad a condition. So we were lucky and I was able to get some money from Topeka. And so we are going to patch some sections of the four lane highway. So basically, 1A will go from the 35th Street all the way north to 39. And I'm not going into the details. Well, I think we do the two north ramps on that. We got to get those open. We will always maintain access into Chanute. So, so that part that part has been done. So can I ask a question? When sure. you say reconstruct, does that mean you're going down to? No. no what we're going to do is we're going to remove the pavement. We're going to remove all the paper and we will cut out some of the grade but that's because we're going to put new base rock and stuff okay. in and and some some different drainage things and try to make sure we don't run into the same drainage issues that we had before but when i say reconstruct we're going to remove the old and put back new okay i got so many things i'm not sure which one to press okay this is sequence b of one and this just goes down to 140th Road or just a little bit south of there. And then it goes up to where we started at, at 35th Street. Now, all of phase one has to be done in, I believe it was 125 um, calendar days. Yeah, it was 125 calendar days that all that has to be done in. Now, a calendar day is just like it says. It's just a day on the calendar, but you don't count Sundays. So that's phase one. And then we have phase two. I just want to make sure. I'm sure it's 125. I'm going from memory, which I shouldn't do. I think that's what you said the other day. Okay. Well, good. I'm saying Close the same thing twice. 125 or 135, somewhere in there. Yeah, I think it's 125. Yeah, it is. Yeah, 125. Okay. I've got it done. You were right. Notes, so. so we've got 125 calendar days to get that done. So then, after they do, after they do 1A, we have Section 2 to work on. And again, Section 2 is broke up into an A and a B, and there's even a C that you'll see in a little bit. This is 2C. Remember I told you we were patching the four-lane section up to 39 on phase one? Well, in phase 2C, what we do is we go in there and we finish patching the four-lane section, and then we kick off and we reconstruct all the way up to the plumber interchange. Now, remember phase 2C because that's going to come back again. 
And here are just some project completion dates for the job. I'll go back to, to 2A and 2B. Um, 2A, as I said, goes from the four lane here up to Plummer Road Interchange. And we'll do some of the ransom stuff there so, so Plummer Road will have access. I'm not sure how we're doing the ramps. Um, we're doing part of them and, and we're doing the north side. And it's, it's just, it's pretty confusing. So I didn't want to bring that in here, but basically, 2A goes from, from the 39 highway, that section of four lane we're patching, and then it goes up to the Plumber Road interchange. And remember I said 2C then goes from um, the plans designated as 1150th Road. I'll call it the Humboldt Chanute interchange. The old highway. The old highway, right. <laughs> Because that was the secret to getting an agreement with Monarch. I had to get access from the old highway to 39. And so anyway, this section here of 2A and 2B, the agreement with Monarch was 180 calendar days to get it done in. So, again... 2A, well, I shouldn't, I'll just say from the Plumber Road interchange to the old highway interchange, that's 180 day count. That's the only time I got 180 days to get that all rebuilt for Monarch. And then this is just a 1B. I'm going the wrong way. See, I can't work two things at once. And then 2C is that in. Or again, when we come down to the four-lane section and tie up to Plummer Road. Now, the reason I wanted you to remember this is because what I have been told by the contractor, he's going to come in and he's going to focus on Plummer Road to the Chanute Humboldt Interchange because he only has 180 days there, but also... He has an incentive there too, $15,000 a day for early completion, up to a maximum of 30 days. So he can make 450 grand if he gets that done a month early. And so that's why what I've been told is he's going to come in, he's going to do phase one, 1A, 1B, and then he's going to jump up and he's going to do 2A and 2B, and then he's going to come back in the end and do 2C. And that, these are some of the calendar completion dates that we have for that job. The, the whole project needs to be open to unrestricted traffic on November 18th of 2022. Now, if you stop and think about it, the best paving weather would be probably June, July, August, maybe April, May, you know, start in May. And he's got six months, so my guess is they're banking on getting that 30-day early completion to make the extra 450000 and they're going to get this thing done, that, that one mile or that section between the two interchanges, so it's done by that November 18th date. And that makes sense. You know, you do that at the end of the project, and you got a chance to make some big bucks with it and get it open for everybody. Clear as mud, right? Mm -hmm. Any questions on any of this? My, one of them would be just maintaining access, and we're going to be trying to it, yeah, you're exactly have un, right. unauthorized detours. and Yeah, you know, unofficial, unofficial detours. Yeah, we're going to be facing that again. Okay. You're right. Um, at the pre-construction conference, they did say since the first section one has to be done first, um, didn't you, Mike, ask if maybe we could get something done so we could get from... From the start of the project up to 140th. From 140th to 150th. 140th to 150th. And I don't know when they'll do that, but that should probably be, when they get ready to actually start paving and shouldering and stuff, that should probably part be part of the first phase of that project. So I'm thinking that we can probably that will probably help us. Yeah. And if they do that, then 
maybe we can get them talked in to come in and doing the shouldering and striping that mile or whatever, however many miles it is. About, mile and a half. about somewhere close to three quarters of a mile. Three quarters of a mile. Maybe we can get them talked in to come in and strip in that. It, it might cost me a little extra money because they might have to do a couple move-ins. I don't know, but that's something we can talk about then. And we're open to helping again on unofficial detours. Okay. This we, pa this, sorry, go ahead. This here. patch in on the four lane, uh, is that going to be cement or? Is that yeah, it'll be concrete patching. The okay. thing that's kind of interesting, I thought it was interesting about this patching up there and stuff. The contract says, says it's supposed to be in, in the first phase, phase one. But then it goes on and it says, it can be done in a different phase. But if it's done in a different phase, you have to carry traffic through the work zone. And if we remember, that first section is going to be closed off. And so that's why the contractor wants to get in there and do that patching because he won't have to mess with vehicles going to and from. Mm -hmm. So it's a good move on their part. Very good move. But yes, okay. it'll be concrete patching. We do the asphalt stuff because I have nothing else to use. And, and I tried some concrete, the Iola. The, new, the Allen County part is Iola's maintenance area. And if you notice up there, they've done a lot of patching with concrete pavement. And the Neosho County part is out of uh, Pittsburgh, you know, Erie. And so we've done asphalt on this end of it. And none of it's held up very well. I mean, that water underneath and stuff. And, and I keep reminding these guys, especially the, the Pittsburgh group, I said, you know, the district engineer drives from Independence to Chanute. Well, that was when I was going every day to the office. So you'd think you guys would keep that road in real good shape for them, but it didn't phase them. It didn't phase them at all. Any other questions? So when is uh, 39 West of Chanute going to be open? Ah, I know that it's not really part of this project, but I think people in Chanute are curious about that. Okay. Um, I'm thinking, I get my weeks mixed up. Last week, and I don't remember what day it was, the contractor that we have selected for the emergency repair, BNB, BNB Bridge uh, LLC, I believe it is, we met at Ash Grove and we had a safety training. And I think yesterday they were supposed to be moving in equipment and stuff. Now, when we solicited bids for the emergency repair work, I made it very clear completion date was one of the things we're going to look at. Not just price, completion date as well. And don't quote me on this, but I believe one of the three B&B had like April 16th. And the reason that date comes to mind is right around tax thing. I don't know. But I think they had April 16th. One of the other ones had April 17th. And then another one based it off working days. And so we uh, we elected BNB also had the, the least amount of money, it had the cheapest bid, so we went with BNB. Now, there is nothing in the contract that states it has to be done by that date. The only thing the contract states is you get in there, you work, you work hard, and you pursue it, and then you get out. So I don't have anything to hold it to that definite date. But that was one of the things we looked at when they got the bids. I said, you guys tell me the date that you can have this open for me. Um, in fact, uh, I just got a call today from the rock supplier. So the, the, the bridge is definitely a, a big, big ticket item. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. It's been, it's been interesting. So who's paying for this bridge? Astro. Okay. Let me just kind of like say, they hit on the patrol your or as you go to patrol you when they hit that bridge going north of Chanute. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The one that goes across there all yeah. road on 39. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it wasn't just a rock too high on the truck bed. <laughs> no. It's not the first time this has happened. Really? No, not as bad. Well, not as bad. Like I said, I've been called there, you know, a couple times since I've been hanging out at Chanute to go look and 
like they they had they didn't have the build bed up, but they had the rock pile too high, the big old rock maybe take out a little piece of the deck on the side, you know, nothing. Mm -hmm. You didn't even get the rebar exposed, but you had the rebar exposed this time. Oh yeah, yeah. And then um, I guess I'm going to pat ourselves K down on the back. Uh, once Darren went and looked at the thing, we knew enough it was we couldn't keep traffic going across it, so we shut the road down. And we had our uh, structural people come down the next day. They reviewed the structure, told us what we had to do. Then we uh, brought on a consultant, and we hired a consultant to go ahead and get the plans out as soon as we could. And then they got the plans worked out for us, and then. Um, uh, the project engineer that I have in Pittsburgh, he went out and solicited bids from three different contractors and then we sent them into Topeka. They acted on it, they got the uh, contract written up for us, and we got things rolling pretty much, I think, pretty quickly. So, it just complicates yeah. this 160, 169 well, project. Short traffic. Trying to be a major issue, I do believe, because we can't get them off the old Oak Bridge. As far as access, right. So it's 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 yeah, it's going to be it's a challenge for everybody. Um, it's a real challenge for Midwest Minerals because they're providing the aggregate for ESS. So we're working on it as fast as we can. Any other questions? As far as uh, unofficial. Uh, helping with the dust abatement or prep. I mean, work it like we did with 39, and we did those three bridges in there, and we yeah. we have a pre picture, pre pictures, and uh, go in. And yeah, what the secretary is required by statute to designate a highway or a route for a detour. <clears throat> the other thing he has to do is he has to sign that detour. And he has to maintain that detour. And that's the only responsibilities that the secretary has. So he does not have to be a helping hand in, in the counties on local roads. But the last three secretaries I've had, I've worked under, they have helped. And I am sure in this case they will help as well. Again, it's up to the discretion of the secretary, but from past and previous actions, I don't see that changing. And it would probably be like we did in the past. Um, when it gets time, we would play for dust control. And we would pay materials. And then we would, since you guys are public, and if you are, you provide a public service for your roads. That's part of your job as, as a county. And so I would ask that your your own material, not materials, but your your equipment and your and your personnel would be on the county. And that's kind of how we've handled it in the past, and that's what I will try to get done in this case, too. And again, like I said, the secretary does not have to do that, but all the secretaries have been very agreeable to it, and I don't see any change on this one. Okay. Any other questions? This goes a little bit better when I get, quote, all the information. <laughs> this has been a real challenge. I mean, some of it come out, some of it didn't come out, and yada yada. But I'll quit crying. You've got it all now, right? I got it now. I got it. Yeah. Does the city have any questions? I'm just here listening to. Okay. I think you're supposed to come up and talk to us on the eighth. And you're going to hear the very same thing. Maybe You'll have new information by then, Wayne. Pardon? You'll have new information by then. Probably not much. Not much. Not much. That's good. But this will be the same thing I'm going to give to the city of Chinook. I might have slept since then, so I might forget a part or two, but that's pretty much what it's going to be. But, I mean, it will bring a lot of traffic through Chinook. And it will. So and that's why, and, and, that. and it's a good thing you brought that up. Um, when we get ready to do phase two, we're going to go back to the other, we're going to go back. We're not going to bring traffic through Chinook anymore. We're going to, the bridge better be open by then and the road open and so we're going to go ahead and use the other detour so we'll be we'll, we will stop bringing by our detour we will stop bringing people through Chinook for phase two okay 
That's good to know. Wayne, again, uh, when do you estimate the section between 35th Street and say 140th, which is the south end of the project, to be closed down? I'd say we had an issue with the signage because we did change the detour and we went east on 39 instead of west. The contractor was having some difficulty in getting the signs made, but they were going to put up some variable message signs, these boards, you know, the flash. And so my guess is the 10th, the, the March 10th, they'll probably try to get in there. That's, that's what they're trying for. And just to let you guys know, um, we really pinched the dates, the days down for this job. There's not a lot of messing around in it. Um, in fact, in that upper phase in here, Darren and I, one of the contractors recommended closing off all of phase two, closing it all off, and then that way, Humboldt, Myola, none of them could come in the old highway, and it's just going to be, we thought, no, we need to try to keep something open. And so Darren and I recommended that they can't close that all at once. 2A and B, yes. And then come in and open 2A and B and then close 2C. That's fine. We can get people around that way. Well, then Topeka calls me and they said, is the contractor going to be able to build it then? with the days that we have because our days are tight. And I just, from my experience, I thought, yeah, I think they can do it. They aren't gonna have a lot of time for messing around or anything like that. They're gonna have to get in there and go to town. And if they have to work some weekends and stuff, so be it. Let's just get it in and get it done. And so they supported us and we kept up that then. So the days are tight. I mean, it seems like an eternity when it affects you. And I understand that, but I mean, we pinched it down about as far as we could pinch it. Well, we appreciate that. So. And like I said, this is my fourth rodeo with the ESS. Um, they have, they have. When I first got my position, they had K sixty eight up there by the uh, Walmart distribution center. And then they did the piece on 169 north of this piece. They left 70 working days on that job. They got in there, they got it done, and they got out of there. They got a national paving award for that project. Unfortunately, COVID hit, so you couldn't go pick it up and all that stuff. And then they went, they went down on US 75 down at the state line by Caney, and they did a four-lane piece down there. And again. They got quality work, they got it done before the contract required, and they, uh, and they were a little bitter. I have a, a friend of mine who was a previous supervisor, a mentor, he was a construction engineer, and he said, you have time, quality, and cost. You can do two, but you can't do three. These guys proved him wrong because how great the cost is, I don't know. But they were the low bidder on the totem pole. All those jobs they've already done, they got done before the time was required. And their quality work, well, the 169 won them a paving award. So, I mean, I am really excited to have these guys in town to get this work done for us. I have a question, if you don't mind. No. Oh, sorry that I'm late, but I was I live uh, on the old highway, which is the High Oak Road, which is uh, between the 170th and 160th. And uh, how am I going to be affected on that file with detours and, and with uh, traffic? That's one question. Second question is, what are you going to do to my road after? after the fact, I got a good road, and, and I want to keep a good road there. Okay, I can't answer your first question because I really don't know where you live. Well, I'm not that familiar. 17275 Elk Road. That doesn't tell me. Okay. Selfish to me. 
You're, I, and I don't know how the it's traffic's going to go. Mike will help me out on that. I don't know. But we plan on putting the roads back. Like I said, I will give him money. My plan is to give him money for materials. He has equipment and he has a manpower. And the plan is when the job's done to get the road back into the original shape. Well, we've got better than a chip and steel road out there. And it's uh, when, when you get done, Paint's going to be uh, needing to be repainted, and 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 the plan is is to restore it to the condition. Okay, uh, it's, it's good now, and yeah. that's what I want yeah. to see. And I don't know how I, I can't tell you how the traffic is going to affect you because I do not know. Well, is there a detour going? It'll be our unofficial detour. Yeah. Unofficial. Well, for it'll be busy. Yeah. It'll be very busy. With local traffic. Which one the is Elk Road? I guess I'm not. With, with it's where you come out south of Shishu. Every equipment. Oh, okay, the one that road. goes out from, it's from Shaw. It's Shaw. Yeah, Shaw, 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 okay. Shaw Elk Road. We can. A mile yeah. east of 169 going south. Okay, okay. The, the truck traffic should not be on that road, other than mm -hmm. the local, like, farmers. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> but it'll be busier than, it, than I see it now. Uh, yeah. And I, I don't mind it. I accept that. that I, I also want to be replaced no. where, where I'm at now. Right. And my, and my plan is, is we return to, to where it is today. Right. That's pretty good. So is it chip sealed now? No. Mm -hmm. That's paved. That's paved? Okay. New mm -hmm. and paved. Yeah. That's all part of the no patches. project. Yep. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry, I hang out in Independence. I'm not that familiar yet with this new <laughs> county roads and stuff. Well, you're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we started this when I was back, what, 10 years ago? When this was first were... Yeah, this, this, this is a pool project. So what that means, and I hope I'm not boring you with it, what it means, but what a pool project is, is T-Works had this certain pot of gold. And if projects got done cheaper than what they were contracted or they were projected to be, then that money was going to be put into a different pot and all these projects that were not selected for T-Works in would be considered to draw out of that other pot of funding. Well, that's where the first 169 job came from and that's where this one came from too. It came from the pool projects. So technically, it wasn't a scheduled T-Works job, but there was enough money saved they were able to find it to do these jobs. And it took an, it, and it was a high enough priority that it scored higher than some of the other projects so we could go ahead and build it. I remember when we had the meeting there in Chinook, we discussed how we were down on the bottom of the chain at, at that point as far as right. we worked our way. Right. To the top. And and if you remember that meetings in Chinook, um, and I understand completely, but everybody wanted to carry traffic through construction. And when they did that, that boosted our cost up so high that there was no way we would ever get the project selected. Now that was before my time in Chinook, but, but I know Darren and George Dockery worked on, worked our tails off to come up with a way, that's why we didn't, there, it was their idea to patch the four lane section instead of replacing it because I don't know how many more millions of dollars that would have cost. But you are correct. And so when we had that first that meeting where everybody wanted to carry traffic through, the cost was astronomical. And so we said, hey, we can't do this, but if we want to get it done, let's find a different way of doing it. And that's when we come up with this other plan. And that got us the project money. So at least 169, we're making gains, which is, I think, just fantastic. Carries a lot of traffic. Gets a lot of traffic. And it gets a lot of truck traffic. Um, mm -hmm. I, I got to be real careful on how I approach this, but um, there's a little bit of a feud between 69 and 169, you know, which one gets the most truck traffic and stuff. So since I have both of them in my district, I'm going to plead the fifth and I'm going to say, yeah, they're most heavily traveled truck, truck routes. So, but, but you're right. Um, there's a gentleman that used to come into my office all the time. Bless his heart, I haven't seen him for a while, so I hope he's feeling good. But he was always telling me, you know, the 169 has the most truck traffic. And he said, when I drive here, there, or yonder, go out to my farm, he says, I just see 
tens of trucks at one time and stuff. So it gets a lot of trucks there. And it's just rocking those panels something fierce. So I'm really excited about this project. I think Lori has a question. I do. I'm Lori with 911. Um, would it be possible to kind of put me in this loop uh, for beachers and you know when you're shutting stuff down, when you're going to be moving, things like that? Because we dispatch all the emergency services in the county, so I, you know, that would be extremely helpful to us. Do you have a card? I have one in the truck. I'll go get you one. Okay. Yeah. There's no reason why we can't do that, and uh, I will since I am old and senile. I will ask Christy to make a note of that, and we will we will get together with our, our project personnel and stuff, and and make sure we kind of come together with a plan. Okay, I'd appreciate and, it. Yeah, there's no reason why we can't, and it's very important. I understand Absolutely. that, so we'll make sure that we get you included. All right, thank you. Anybody else? Going once, twice, sold. <laughs> Do you have, have some? No, I oh, okay. Thank you. Well, thank you again for letting me show Thanks up and bore you. I'm sorry, what? Oh, I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. And uh, the, the plan is and the goal is to return the roads back to the way they were. That's, that's what my goal is. I'm not going to give you a Cadillac if it's only a Ford. Well, you're old, don't forget. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, thank you for letting me bore you. If you have any questions, just call Kelly. Yeah. Chris has all the questions. Forgot one person. And again, don't fall asleep. You'll see the yeah, same fine. presentation that she did. <laughs> Do I need to make any changes to it? I look forward to hearing it. Okay. Does it convey? Does it? Did this convey what you wanted? Yeah. Yes. Do you want? Is there something else you wanted? You, uh, I was asked to maybe bring something to the commission. Is there something that you, else that you want? You gave me the timelines and what we're expecting. And okay. What we need to work to. Okay. And then I know Mike's been working on the dust abatement issues. Now, in the past, um, I've been able to pay for the dust abatement. And, and I'm assuming that I'll probably have the same success here. Okay. That'd be great. No. Thank you. Yeah. We're going to take a 10-minute break so that you have yeah, to so collect like all your stuff here. Yeah, so it's going to take me forever to get everything passed yeah, up no the way. Oh, 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 sir? I'm making a motion. Sir? I'm making a motion. Okay, I'll second that motion. All those in favor? I need to bring, I need to bring my laptop, my projector. Okay, I'll bring your laptop. Okay, I'll bring your hand I don't. What, what would you like for a hand the whole thing? Well, yeah. yeah. Okay, it yeah. shows like the 1A, B, 1C, and 2A, B, and Okay, I can do that. Thank you. Thanks, Lloyd. Thanks, Lloyd. Thank you. You're welcome. Excuse me. Christy, did you get that? Yes. Okay, I need to. Tommy, get you get the. I need to take something to Chanute that shows kind of the map, the, shows the 1A, 1B, 1C. Oh, okay. You, you can get it. that off the plans or something, maybe? Well, I might just take it a slide off of that. Yeah, that you could print one I of those slides out. out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here I go again. I hope I get back up. <laughs> I'll call the winch if you know. Thank you guys. I You're welcome. It. Thank you for all your help. Yeah. If there's any way to have this uh, PowerPoint, if you felt comfortable with it, to email it to me. Um, I could post this link to some degree, maybe some of the pictures, to the clerk's uh, website page, or our county website page. So then that way they can kind of yeah, see I mean, those lines of closures and what those bases right, mean. Right, exactly. Would that be okay? Yeah, yeah okay. Think. That's a good idea. Okay, thank you guys. You're welcome. <coughs> I'm going to send your PowerPoint to me. I'll send it to her. Or either way, I mean. It's like 21. It's a large. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think but, I can get in trouble. I think everything. 
pretty good on it. Yeah, because it wasn't, you did have one plan page on there, but it was just the front page that shows the map of the whole property. But that's public information. Yeah. But it should be Feel bad taking all their time. Well, I think that by doing what you did, you could have had just as many questions as you hadn't been thorough. I think I had to show it. I mean, it pictures. Yeah. And it's because, yeah. yeah. You're good at anticipating all the questions and then go ahead and put everything. I'll get it out. Okay. I've got two little rolly things on there, so I don't know how that was. I'll just put it away and then I'll just take care of it when I get back to shit. Worry about it later? Yeah. I was much better prepared this time than I was when the commissioner and Mike came into the Well, the yeah, time. it helped that we had that meeting the other, the other day because yeah. there were a lot of questions answered there. Sometimes I don't get, there's somebody that doesn't notify of those meetings, but most of them, if they're on your calendar, I'll just, I learn a lot when I, is this ours? Yeah. Okay. Um, it left whatever it was. Did you, are you already signed out of your? Yes. Okay. That's the pointer. I'm not clear on 2A and 2B. Um, and I don't have time for the obvious joke, but I have 2C starting from a four-lane path, patching right. road, north to the plumber. Plumber road interchange, right. Uh, I have 2A being from the four-lane north to plumber, uh, and from K39 to plumber. No. 2A would be from... You see at the bottom. 2A is. Okay. And I don't remember which one's which, but one of them deals with the ramps. Okay. 2A, 2A or 2B deals with the ramps. Okay. And then the other one deals with Plummer Road to the um, Chinook Humble Interchange. Okay. <laughs> and I don't remember if 2A was a ramp or if. But one, one of them goes from Plumber Road North to the to the Chinook Humble Interchange. Right, that's either 2A or 2B. And then 2A deals with the uh, ramps. And I thought there was the interchange, and I think that was the, um, 1150 or, or the, the Chinook Humble Road. Okay. But that's what it is. One deals with ramps, and the other one deals with paving in between. Right. And that those two jobs have to be done in 180 days, six months. Right. Did I bore you? It's a neat project. It's going to be a really good project when we're done. But getting to that point is going to be challenging. Is this your pen wing or was this here? No, that was there. Okay. We're going to send the PowerPoint out to Heather 
put those on the website, so maybe yeah. that'll help a little bit. Yeah. I should be able to do that right away. You get it from Ray. Now that will be posted on the Neosho County KS website as opposed to the courthouse Facebook page. I think so. You might ask Heather. I think that's what she was talking well, about. Well, it's up to me. I don't Facebook. Well, it wouldn't be on Facebook. Yeah. I don't have right. Facebook. Hi, how are you? Good. I never, you I never understood Thank you for things asking. like that. Sure. Candy oh, face oh, and oh, angry burns oh, and oh, angry oh, crush. Oh, I don't. I don't either. I think. Do we have everything, Christy? Yes. I believe so. If you got any questions or anything, and if you got any people calling up complaining, just give them Christy's number. I like it. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Well, good afternoon. Good to see you again. Nice seeing you too. Thank you. Did you want me, sir? No, I was just gonna say hi. Oh, okay, appreciate it. I uh, I was trying to get down here, and I was down here on another matter, and so I slipped in here. Hi, Teresa. Anyway, I'm glad this was going on.
Someone he's supposed to be working under me, that's the understanding. If you want him here, the commission as a whole needs to decide if they want him to come in or not. That's how we do things here. Well, he's a road and bridge inspector, so if, if, I, if I want him in here, this needs to be decided as a commission, not as Paul Westoff. When you leave this room, well, it shouldn't be on. decided as you either. Okay, then if you want him because you to told work, him not to show up, that's right. Yeah. Well, that's, that's bullshit. I don't feel that it is. I do. And I don't feel you should talk to me that way. <laughs> because outside of this, I, always, I work for the commission, not you, Paul. I work for the three of you. Well, if you the three did. of you would have decided at the last meeting, yes, have Mark come in, I have no problem with that. But that was never discussed. Well, what's wrong with Mark coming in? He's an inspector. I don't have a problem with Mark coming in if the commission would have said, bring him in here. That didn't happen. Why didn't we talk about this last meeting? You told him not to come in. And I just explained you why. You do not have that authority. Uh, okay. Who's your, who's your bosses? Right here. Okay. All right. As a commission, not as individuals outside of this room. Hmm. So, right, I mean... I would like a little input here. Right. Well, I, I, I would say what exactly was Mark to come here and defend himself a little. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just he, he had a lot of issues with the roads. Mm -hmm. And it's in his reports. Yeah, it's in his reports that the uh, Apex and IA has not repaired since May, is what he told me when I called him last Friday, I believe. And he had a lot of issues with that. And it's all in his report. Mm -hmm. Well, I think. I mean, why, why do you need anything more than what he puts in his reports? I mean, he, the reports is what he goes out, looks at, and finds. He puts them in a report. He sends them to myself, you guys, and Jason. Well, he, and he, okay. I don't know That's what fine. else he needs to do. Well, really. And if the commission here wants me to ask Mark to come in at the next meeting, I'll be happy to do that. But I don't see the point. I do. Well, if the other two will go along with you, Paul, then I don't have a problem. I don't need the other two. I need one. Okay. Well, I, my thing is... And I, want, I want him to come... Excuse me. Oh, no, that's fine. I, I want him to come in here to get Nick on board because he just got in office, you know, and see what was going on with these roads because we got... These roads suck. Well, and Jason, he's going to be here directly. At now, the and I thought it would be a good time to have Mark come in and then listen to Jason and, you know, get things ironed out. Well, I, I don't think he needs to be here to do that. And I also don't think that him coming to this meeting should take priority over his wife's doctor. Well, he, he didn't, didn't have to drive her. Today. He didn't tell me nothing about it. Well, he told me about it. Well, he didn't tell me. And I just talked to him yesterday. I just talked to him today, so mm -hmm. you can ask him about it if you want. Oh, I will. So. I will. I mean, yeah, I if like we it. have a problem, I don't know mm -hmm. where Mark has any authority to, I mean, we, I mean, he's just reporting, so what, him coming, it's not like we're going to instruct him to do anything different than what he's already doing, because he's just reporting, it's my 
and Jason that we need to have results. I okay, mean, well, not Mark. Okay, well, have, have Mike do his damn job then. And what am I not doing, Paul? Well, you're not getting the roads fixed up. I get and we have asked time. in these reports that's what we hired Mark to do mm -hmm. is go out there and make assessments if he sees a problem. Report and they, they, they and, and, and if, they do not listen and to Mark. What am I supposed to do? Well, how many times your road, have, your road and bridge director? How many times do we have to have this conversation? Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to do when I say get these roads fixed and it doesn't happen? What? Yeah. Well, let's shut them down. Well, you have the authority to no. do that. I don't. No. no, that contract that they signed, hey, you might as well throw it in the trash. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Well, I mean, if they're not upheld in their part of the thing, I have no problem trying to stop them where they're at. But that is not all that best. Jason and his crew that we need to be really forcing the issue on right. and those roads. And then the, I think Jason just arrived. Yeah, so. yeah well, in the contract, it should have went through uh, an engineer before it was ever signed. You know. Okay, there mis well, mistakes may be made in the past. We just need to deal with what we have and where we're going to go from here. Because we keep talking about the mistakes that you feel we've made. Honestly, That's not going to change anything. Honestly, the biggest so, thing we ever, as a commission, did is let loose control of the roads. Should yes. have never, never happened. I mean, and I'm not one to second guess anybody and what's done. The commission was ultimately responsible for those roads. We should have never allowed them to have control of the roads. And we, it should have been put forward that if there's a problem with them, we fix them, we build them. Because we'll ultimately, when they walk out the door, this commission is going to be liable for the roads. Yes. Now we just need to fix the problem and go forward. Hello. Hi. I guess you're with us, Jason. I am. Come on in. Okay. Trying to solve the road issues that we're having. Oh, we get a lot of complaints. So, so okay. maybe you can help us get to a point we can get these fixed. I'm sure we can. Good. I mean, uh, uh, go ahead, Paul. Here. Jackson Road yep. has not been addressed. No, we got a grader out there. They got addressed. Okay. Well, as of this morning, they had not been. Since when? I mean, we, I mean, Depends on. I mean, I'll be honest. After we got, after I got uh, told, I informed our uh, construction manager, management team out there, they put a grader out there. Mm -hmm. We did not put any rock down. I will say that. So if, if it's about rock that needs to be that is identified that needs to be replaced, that did not happen. But I will say that we did get a we did get a grader out there to address what was necessary to, to be done. And what are we going to do about these uh, non-haul roads that these guys have been driving? Tearing up. Okay, I, it'd be probably be addressed. You know, the big thing is, is everything's going to be addressed during the survey, uh, the post construction survey. And that's being a, a line associated with Kirk and Mike. And I talked to Tanner today, and uh, I think we need to get those get those guys down here because south of 47, you guys are more or less done, aren't you? For as heavy. Yeah, heavy haul. Well, uh, it depends on how you want to define a heavy haul. I mean, the big thing is, is yes, uh, we have some remediation that's in process um, where we have, where we will have dozers, you know, smaller dozers, of course, where we'll have dozers and some excavators taking out radiuses and replacing culverts and different things like that. Because not all the structures that were identified have been completed to mm -hmm. date yet. And I do not know off the top of my head of what those areas are in question. I do know that. Um, we were working on the one on 150th, of course, to be have that one completed, and then also in addition to that, because it's uh, thrombin asphalt uh, that needs to be applied, um, we're trying to get that done at the same time as the one that got damaged with on um, 70th there. And I believe it's between Mead and Elk, if I remember correctly. Uh, I think it's Mead and Elk on that one. Yeah. Or Douglas, it, Douglas, and I think it's Douglas and Elk. Is the one? Did you get the one on 150th completed? No. Um, we still we got it we got it in place. We still have to pour the uh, uh, head walls, the wing walls, 
um, and we still have to get the asphalt a application done. We did place uh, steel uh, steel plates over top of that to open the road back up. Okay. Just well, I had, had a taxpayer talk. You know, you get that curve that goes around there uh, oh, yeah. towards Arlington. Yes, sir. And he said that, uh, and he works for the city, and he said, you know, where the work signs should be a little quicker Further out. Be before the curve. Okay. Because, you know, you get people talking on their phone and yes, texting and not paying attention. They come around there going 55. And no, understood. Yeah, no, we'll make sure we'll get that addressed if there's okay. side issues that's needed out there. Yeah. So that's I appreciate it. Yep. That's not a problem. So I thought there were two structures on 150 that we were There working. is. Um, the other culvert that we need to uh, place in there is going through the uh, right away with the railroad. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know if you guys realize it, but it's hard to get <coughs> Their attention. So, <laughs> oh yeah, we've been trying to get their permission associated to the individual. I just got informed last week or two weeks ago that the individual that we had been working with is no longer with the railroad, so we got to kind of start over again. So, okay, that's with Blanco, right? I'm sorry, with Blanco or uh, or is so yeah, yeah, Blanco. Yeah, Blanco. Yeah, you're right. So I guess our concern is with this bypass on 169. Yeah. Um, yeah, when that's going to be done? Oh, we should be done this week. Uh, the only thing that's with the one. Yeah, with the one. The other, the other culvert is yet to be determined. We don't see that taking as much time because it's just a standard um, uh, corrugated metal plate okay. on that one. That one's not a, a box culvert or anything like that. So that should not take more more than two days at that worst case scenario because that's just aligning out the logistics associated to uh, right. getting the asphalt out there. And we can have temporary measures over there for a period of time. If necessary, so we can have that uh, identified during that period. So the big one that we are more concerned about is that box cover up one that, that is on that one fifty because that took that took a took us a solid week to get that one replaced. So I, I went over it last night, so it's yeah, it's a project. Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna make that much better mm -hmm. in that area. With uh, not being, are you guys gonna be out of the way on that time? with the possible closure of 169 because <coughs> it'll add complications to your schedule if yeah. you're having to dodge cars every time you go down. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, we don't, I don't know the specifics associated with what's going on with KDOT and that, uh, uh, with that time frame, but we, we are focusing on that. saying yeah. March 10th. March 10th, yes. March 10th start date. Yeah, we didn't try and get done, I'll be honest. So I do not, I will say that there's gonna be residual work that needs to be done out there. What that will entail, I do not know at this time. Because we also have radiuses along 169 that have to be addressed uh, for, uh, for the general purpose of what we got permitted for uh, with KDOT too as well. So we have additional works with them that have to be uh, completed to close out with them as well. So, Paul, do you have a list of roads, or those are the roads that you wanted to talk about? I don't have a list of roads. But okay, well, I was just curious. I'm sure. Uh, I mean, we have Mark's reports. Mark's reports, <laughs> and they should be, and he was telling me they were using a lot of uh, non-haul roads. Harper, Harper's bad, Jackson's bad. Uh, mm, 80th. West, I believe, is bad. And anything that needs to be done will be identified in that post uh, okay. construction review. I mean, I've talked to Tanner myself, so I mean, okay. the big thing that we're trying to do is focus on structures first because they, they we're processing it. Just to try and give you guys an understanding, uh, what we're trying to do is identify the uh, replacement structures and or repairs that need to be completed. In addition, have them come out and do the inspections that are required for the post-construction survey as identified in our UA, and make sure that we can uh, um, uh, point out what has uh, what's needed to be done during that period of time. And then afterwards, is when we'll start. Uh, after we get the clearance associated to the structures, then then we'll be coming through associated to the road conditions yes, uh, and, and and basically looking at that as a specific area to address. So that way, we're not impacting that areas where the structures have to either be repaired or replaced. 
I know when the one of the ones that he's not here, probably going to see several yeah. thousand cars a day. Yeah, Mike already informed us on that. So we're going to, I reinforce that, and I've already sent out notices that we're trying to get everything out of that immediate area uh, off of Elk. And there's only two turbines that I can think of right now that we have immediate access to that we don't have fully uh, fully completed yet. So, so we're going to try and get that done as soon as next. That corridor is just as bad going north as you need as it is going south as you need out that road. So, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Understood. Yeah, Jason, that, if I may, I was just going to ask you again to try to get. I know you've got work going on on Elk Road and Chase Road, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a while before you can turn those back to us. But if you could get them yep. as close as you can yep. uh, before March 10th, yep. I nope. think that's when the, the bomb drops. Yep. And then, no, we laid, last week we laid out, as, as you know, we laid out some gravel out there in those on, on those areas and everything else. The only thing that we're trying to do is get those radiuses cleared out. Um, I do know that they were working on the one on Elk and 150th. In addition, they, I think they completed the one on 140th and Elk, and they are should be should be working on the one on 47 and Elk too as well. So if they haven't gotten the other two, if they got the north two done, I think they're ready. But I think they got finalized the the ones to the south. We're just ready for you to be done. I see how you are, Gail. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, we have a lot of things that need to be yeah, fixed in the meantime, so yep. we know you're working at it. So. And, that, and I'll say that too. We're getting closer. We only have two circuits left. We have uh, the, uh, around about 94 machines running. Um, and uh, schedule wise, we're looking at doing the last two circuits, hopefully this week, for sure next week. Uh, tomorrow's one, that'll bring in a, you know, access for another 12 machines to be uh, commissioned. And then the last 12, um, you know, hopefully if, if not this week, then for, for, of course, first part commit next week, we should, we should have those up and energized and uh, you'll see the last of the turbines being commissioned, so. Yeah, kind of stuff here. Sure. In regards to the turbines, over the weekend, we had a concerned citizen call in and was wondering why some of them the lights were not coming on mm -hmm. and we did uh refer them i believe to you yep i got the phone bill. okay and um so before long is all the lights going to be on or? they are and the one thing i want to inform you guys as much as the general public and i'll say that i've gotten a handful of reports of you know certain indiv individual turbines that don't have that light on some are due to maintenance um just because of the fact that they have an outage or, or something associated to the the performance of the equipment where that turbine you know the breaker basically shuts off and that turbine doesn't have power anymore and that light is no longer active um the other side is is actually is the the area that you're looking at and depending on what you have for overcast skies because they are you know essentially so far up in the uh, uh you know so it's only a few hundred feet up in the air that you're actually because of clearance levels you're not going to be able to see them at that point in time and the angle that you're actually looking at them at the head so depending on which direction that you're coming from there is going to be a potential that you're not seeing the immediate light from that area if you're up close and or within that, you know, what I look at is this has potential to be in a mile area. So it comes down to, you know, some of those lights might not be seen, doesn't mean that they're not working. But there are prerequisites associated to what has to be done if there is an outage over an extended period of time that has to be reported. There's some no TAM action that takes place with the FAA. So that happens all internally at the, at the turbine site. Yeah. Oh. No. I think I'm going to try to get uh, Tanner, if the commission goes along with it, uh, get him in here next week and uh, have a special meeting, work session, and do a preliminary on the roads. Okay. Yeah. Please. Please. If, if I may, a little bit. I, I, we discussed this some time back when what we decided then was to wait until Jason had some roads ready to be turned back and then bring Kirk and Michael back on board. Well, we can we can work out the logistics. I know I do know that Tanner, what he was looking at trying to do was looking at structures first is, okay. what, is what he was doing. And I don't know what the time frame is, whether depending of course, but I think that was going to take uh, probably a solid week for his guys to do the structure review and what, what the accessibility 
then after that, then it'd be going through and addressing, you know, general road conditions yeah. at that point. I'm just talking about getting a game plan, mm -hmm. you know. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Front. And, and it's, for the most part, I think that, you know, as Kirk and Michael has done in the past, I think it's pretty much spelled out and it's, you know, going through and utilizing what has been attributed uh, in the RUA, I, I guess. And in addition to that, it's also, um, you know, what's identified as a post-construction review and going over the associated structures on those on those locations. I think, I, I will say the structures, I think is gonna take the most part from a majority of what they need to do mm -hmm. for that study. And then it's aligning up with our structure engine. I think he's a structural engineer, I'm not 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure he is, mm -hmm. that comes in and does that review. So with our team, I think I, we'd probably start, it'd be best to start off with that at, at this point, is what I'd look at it as, and then, um, and then move forward from that on the road conditions in the areas, like as Mike has talked. As, you know, as what I'd look at it as, as per the RUA, as the way it's established right now, is it's supposed to be all for one, but you guys probably don't want to wait that long, and on top of it, we don't either, so if we could coordinate it out, associated to, uh, you know, areas, you know, that would be 80th and south, um, uh, and north of 47, 47 and north is the way I've always looked at it, and maybe identifying something in the middle, too, if we need to coordinate it off even a little bit more, so, but yeah, all means more than open to talk about that at all. Well, you know, let them focus equipment to those certain areas. Exactly. Your moving costs. Yep. By trying to cover the whole area at once. Yeah. Yeah. And then it gives us an area to focus on associated for remediation. On, on, you know, the one thing is that getting the roads done is one thing, but we also have areas of uh, uh, remediation that have that and, uh, reclamation that have to take place on the turbine sites themselves, too, and on those access roads that got built. So it's making sure that we have come, come to, you know, making sure that everyone has the understanding associated with what it is that might need to have work on to have be a skid steer or a grader or something like that. As far as we areas. talk about that, as far as remediation and taking out radiuses, but as far as repair issues, and if you have to come back in to put in radiuses to come back and do repair on the turbine itself, will your, how will that limit future access to those turbines? Well, if, it's you see what I'm saying? It's yeah. uh, worst case scenario. Right, right. If you have to go back in and bring in blades or whatever, yep. you're going to cut yourself off if you have to take out all the radiuses to get to those units. Oh, that's part of the R RUA. They're yeah. all going to be taken They're out. They're all going to be taken out. That's correct. Okay. So uh, we did not put them in as permanent fixtures. Okay. okay. We did not put them in as uh, permanent fixtures. And I will say that that, have, that would have to, if, if it's needed, it would have to be negotiated at that point in time. Okay. Um, now, you know, essentially the only time that we would need that, you know, for um, the large component would be, from what I can see right now, would be only a blade exchange that would, you know, move forward. Well, that's why I'm just saying, if you could take all your radius out, how are you going to get back in here without rebuilding them all back and yeah. come back in? It would be a one-off basis. So okay. if, it, if it was necessary that it had to be done, it would be in that specific site in that specific location. Okay. Yeah, we didn't want to maintain those roads. No, 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 I'm not just saying yeah. Yeah. it would be their expense to try to figure out later how they get back uh, into it, the units. Yeah, and that'd be on the project. You know, okay. if, if it's required, it'd, it'd be a combination of what the project needs to do and associated with, you know, uh, you know the rediscussion with the landowners at that point in time, too. Okay. Well, I'm good, yes. Right? Yeah. Any questions? So we have any time frame? <laughs> Um, I know I keep asking you, but I'm, yeah. I'm as far as these, like, when do you think Kirk and Michael should come in for the structures? Um, in all honesty, I think next week, Paul makes a good point, I think next week would be fine. Uh, it's what their accessibility is, um, to start with the structures, I'd feel, uh, I'd feel confident next week would, you know, to start that, initiate that. Um, and then moving forward, i talked with the uh, site team we actually have bringing up, we're trying to look for a plan of attack associated to that and get the details surrounding it done to understand where we're at on that. But yeah, I'd say you know as soon as next week, if the week after. I think you just uh, talk on like Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday of next week. Okay. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. So we can uh, start. We can start with that. Well, I'll get with my commissioners here and see when they're available. Okay. Not a problem. Just let me know if you guys want me available or not. Okay. All right. So any Thank questions, you. feel free to call. Thanks, Jason. Yep.
Yeah. So, I just wanted to give you an update on what's going on. So, you know, we had a flood in our office um, on the 15th. And I just wanted to say the Bourbon Bridge guys came and helped us move. And uh, I can't say enough about how gracious and kind they are every time they come. Um, really appreciate them and wanted to thank Mike for sending them over. I know he needs them too. Um, we flooded again on Friday. And again. <laughs> I know. Are you kidding me? No. Um, flooded the whole building, so we kind of had to start over. Uh, all of us worked on Saturday and um, rearranged. They got that side cleaned up, so we moved our offices a little bit um, and got over on the clinical side. So um, that went very well. And we all worked out of um, our service area, which our service area is where we usually plan and do our um, clinicals, shots, stuff like that. So we just kind of worked around a little bit. We were still able to keep our services up. They were a little slower, but we still did them. We still did WIC. We still did immunizations. We still did family planning. We still did drug screens. We still did COVID. We still did Healthy Start. We still train and we still work on vets. Um, I had the adjuster call me. I actually spoke with Chris Boyer first, and then he had an adjuster call me. I spoke with the adjuster. He came twice, which I very much appreciate. Um, I got a list. I don't know if it's complete. We're still trying to make everything correct because we want to make sure now that we're back in our spaces, we have no real problems. Because you've got to understand the second time it flooded, when it flooded our service area, it flooded our WIC rooms, women, infants, children. So that's the rooms where we take our clients. We want to make sure our computers and all are okay. Um, so we're working, and so far we seem to be doing pre pretty good on that kind of stuff. A lot of stuff got wet, um, so there was some damage. We don't have a total because we wanted to make sure we have everything we're thinking of. I, ha I can't speak high enough of the landlord for coming and helping us and doing all they did. They worked diligently to get us up and running as fast as they could. Um, and then on um, this Sunday, Mike again sent four men and then the landlord came and some of my staff came and I and we got the offices put back together as quickly as we could. And I can't say, I mean, I gotta say, great job, great job. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome, Tracy. They were good and it was good to have them there to support us. And they didn't complain at all. I'm teasing, they didn't, but I'm just saying that. So. Um, so. So it's always been, always great, just always helped out. Thank you, Tracy. I know, I just wanted to show my appreciation and tell you what, what uh, excuse me, but what happened the second time? That it so the second time, um, so we have three buildings combined and I guess we were probably um, meters. So the third time, or the second time, so they left one of the meters on accidentally so we would have one bathroom to wash our hands, go to the bathroom, do all of that. And I think that they did not I think we were there longer and they probably it just they turned everything else off and it just skipped their attention for a minute. And it was so cold, you know, it's an, you know, just caught their just blue. But they've replaced pretty much everything. I felt like they've done very well. Um, so you had blood lines? Just blood when I came in, twice. Yeah. When I came in on Monday at four thirty it was running out my front door. So, um, so the adjuster, um, I would like some guidance on that because you know I don't want to say something to him or give him something that's incorrect. So, I, I'll be honest and say I'm not sure how to deal with the adjuster. He's been very gracious, very polite, good company. But 
I'm unaware about how to deal with insurance. So don't provide guidance on that. I don't know if it's next to do. Or if I just give them what I think I need to do and move on. I think you have that in your contents because we do. As you know, I mean like anything we were in the building. Mm -hmm. If you're renting your loan, you'd be responsible for your contents. Mm -hmm. I know whatever the function of that is. Yeah. And let the two insurance companies battle that out. So. Okay. But get okay. your list and get away. We got we got our list. Um, we want to just make sure it's pretty correct. You know, we're still working on a few things. Um, so anyway. Um, make sure you're keep track all the time and everything that of staff and road and bridge staff. There might be some reimbursement as far as the what time we're paying road and bridge people okay. to be there and your staff to be there after hours. So. Okay, so then I have a question for you. I know. I might pay my staff, but anybody that's salary is kind of irrelevant, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. I thought so. Mm -hmm. make sure. uh, I mean, my advice is put as much as you can, anything that you think is associated with this, if you've had an expense of loss or anything, they can always question it. You're right. But you put everything on there that you feel like has been affected by this, this, this loss. Yeah. 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 So okay. anything that you question, I would go ahead and put it yeah. on there, and then the insurance can. Okay. Because yeah, there's been a lot of hours it. put in. Over sure. This yeah. Yep. That's something we have not put on there. Okay. Well, the, of those hours, they took away from their duties doing something else. True. And we work the Saturday yeah. and we work the Sunday and right. we work the evening. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, so we're going to turn in grants on the 11th um, for commissioner's approval. I'm pretty excited about this. MCH has given us approval to do um, parenting classes and we're going to be trained on that. So what that means is for people who are needing help before they become maybe a um, state, uh, uh, go into another form of care besides their parents, we'll come in and we'll work with them. They will go to classes with us. And we're very excited to be able to help these parents because we feel like, you know, these kids need this and they need this. And sometimes, they're not always wrong, they just need that boost, that confidence, that love, that support. So we're going to be starting those very soon. Um, and we're going to be working with um, Pregnancy Resource Center. That's one of the programs we're starting. And um, it just encourages us to keep the families together as much as we can, you know. Uh, we just, uh, Um, so the next one is Dress for Success. So what we do is we will go from hopefully parenting to Dress for Success. Well, the people that are looking for jobs, need jobs, been displaced, will have that opportunity. So we also got that grant. So what we'll be doing with them is we will be starting at the bottom and teaching them soft skills. How do you dress? How do you fill out a resume? How do you, what, what are your skills? What do you, what have you learned? Where are you at right now and where can we send you? And then we'll have um, employers come in and visit with them about what do they expect? On time means on time. Eight o'clock means eight o'clock. You know? Uh, we, we dress how we want to be seen. We um, come on time, we show respect, we talk with kindness. It's a lot of other things. Actually, that'll be Kansas Works PCF and a few other partners we're going to work with, Pregnancy Resource Center, different things to help with that also. Um, I'm hoping to also work with Red Cross. I think that's our other goal in um, 31st Judicial. So um, we just signed a grant for um, $4,000 and it's called Bridges. So Bridges is a grant that we're going to bridge children to help them get ready for school. So not only are we taking them from prenatal, we'll take them through to kindergarten. So that's where our goal is at now. So we're going to try to form this as, as a circle and do this. Um, and as you know, I'm on the board of Pregnancy Resource Center, so we're going to help 
they're going to help with student level. So they help because they teach this parenting and train this parenting classes. Um, and so we feel like we really have a lot going on with that. Um, Um, EMC sent a letter I about my claims. I brought them because I figured you guys might want to look at them. It just talks about them being claims. I have copies. Those are yeah. copies for you. Okay, thank you. I wasn't sure. I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page with me. Um, we are, COVID is going wonderfully. Shots have rocked. Thank you for 1,100 shots, and we have had a blast doing them and um, meeting the people. With the addition of the hospital, the party after, we we're over 1,600 yeah. in those two days. So and with that help, it was, it's been so good for we, us. It was a all-around yeah. community effort to get yeah. it done, so it was impossible for one entity to do all that. So. And um, we've got our schools done, we've got all of our emergency, I believe all of our emergency personnel done. We've got even some of our second shots done. We have, um, we are, I think it's 65 and under, if I'm not mistaken now. Yep. And that's pretty. And a lot of others, I mean, we've we yeah. opened it up. And it, yeah, we have, we're doing well. We have, um, This will also take some strain off the hospitals too. Of yeah. Vaccinating, we, so. We only, we only have. So are you doing your clinic now? Yeah. That's nice. We're, I'll have a more notice tomorrow of my next shipment, so I'm waiting until tomorrow morning to so, have all the booster um, doses it hopefully in. We've overall dropped significantly significantly in this county of our um, numbers of testing performed, but we've also dropped significantly in um, positive. So we've been, and people being unhealthy. Um, so the college is also doing good. They have dropped significantly in their positives. Um, the, we go back at, Madova is a two time shot. So you go back in 28 days and do Madova again. So you get a shot one week, and then you go back one time, and then you go back 28 days and get the second shot. So the state sends us primary, and they send us booster, and then that is exactly how we do it. Pfizer is a grown-up shot, and so what I mean is it has to be mixed. And so we haven't gotten any Pfizer, we've gotten the booster. Yeah, the Pfizer will next round and yeah. hopefully that will be probably phased out because Johnson Johnson just got released to where we can have it this week and which will be a one shot with released. no five follow up and I got noticed that it was available for order so they have 34 million doses yeah. ready to go out. Something so, like that. Yeah. So um, we have done a lot of the second doses and Labet Health has been working the outlying areas for us and doing a beautiful job and we really appreciate them and I, I, the, the them work very well with all of us and uh, they just it's all been a great team effort um, and we had the pharmacist there the other day and we really appreciated them so let's talk about the mid COVID um, that is coming into some of the states um, as you already know um, the UK variant has identi been identified in Kansas already. I think it was Ellis County, if I'm not mistaken. Is that mm -hmm. correct? That's correct. South America variant is in 14 states, and the Brazilian variant is in four states. So it, it, it's here. Um, hopefully it won't be here, here with us. But I think we're very well prepared. Um, they keep changing the laws of um, regulations of quarantine. Um, things have gone well. Our goal, to be honest, is to, um, the way that things are looking, they opened up where four people could go to the gym and watch their kids play. So I thought that was very exciting. I don't have to pick and choose anymore. And um, 
Looks like there's possibly going to be prom and graduation, so I'm very happy for those kids that uh, are children this year. I'm sorry they had to miss last year, but I hope that's the goal this year. And they'll be visiting with the schools about that. Um, any questions? I would like to pursue this just very quickly. I visited with the state about this, and I don't know if this is feasible, but they did approve it if I wanted to do it um, because of sitting like this all the time. <laughs> um, they approved us getting a new phone system. Um, and I did not know what you guys thought about that if we got a new phone system in our building. Uh, our other one isn't that old when we purchased those when we transferred over to the void. I don't not, remember. I think it was six years ago, man. Something like that. When we did the void, but we're all new phones. I mean, because they're all, I know some of these are becoming obsolete as far as that, but I would, I would want to check into more. What do you mean the state approved? Well, so, I had asked them about things we could get and what, we'll, what we were hoping instead of putting somebody on hold and you know, it had a set headset that you could actually walk around and go up and ask somebody something and you're right there, you can get information. You don't have to put anybody on hold. You don't have to do any of that. Uh, you could actually go to that place you need to find that file, pull that out, have that discussion with them, go to another room, ask one of the nurses something, and you're right there instead of lag time of going back to that office and doing that. So it's just something for us to think about. Um, <coughs> Compatibility with what our current phone system would be a somewhat of an issue, I think, but I would have to, you'd have to check that out with the Kansas Communication Department and see what... Well, that, that would be what I would be afraid of piecing different parts because all the phones within the whole county were all replaced at the same time if I'm not mistaken oh, and, sure. and there would be some compatibility sometimes Toshiba products and I do believe it's Toshiba do not work in changing between companies so okay I didn't know uh, that okay yeah, I don't know nothing. I just know that, like I said, that was something that they said I could be able yeah. to do. So, um, so that was something that I thought about just because with it, I thought we might do that. There's other things we could do, but I thought, why not get a big expense out of the way? The other thing that we talked about, which I don't know if they'll do this, but I could ask, is a generator because we've got that refrigerator and if we lose that vaccine, but I know that takes some rewiring of that building and that does concern me a little bit. So there's where I'm at right now. I look more to the portable or yes. a generator. I mean, it's not portable. It's a, probably a standalone unit. But. Mm -hmm. um, then I just have a one more thing. for I would like to request some vacation time after grants are done. That's fine. We'll hear you. What date? Um, March 15th to March 24th. And you have the time, right?
I'll move to approve vacation time for Teresa Starr from March 15th to March 24th. I'll second it. I will be working a little bit. I'll work, um, move all of our computers over to TN. So I definitely will be taking the parenting training. Get this on. While I'm doing that, while I'm gone. So we always work at home. So that'll give me time to take the parenting training. So I'm super excited about that. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? That's Does three to zero. Does it take some vacation time? Yes. Does anybody have any questions for me? Logan, I just want to say thank you to your staff for making it through this last couple of weeks. Well, we work well together. Being a little proud of this time. Sounds like you need to hire a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see, are you going to make sure Jim gets a copy of that HR? Oh, yeah. I'll put it down the phone. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, we'll never freeze up. Uh, I think that's a little bit, hopefully. Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming. Jim's secretary. Yeah. Some other stuff I want to touch on. Um, I got a lighting proposal from the electrical designer from Langford, and it's on the second page there. The first page is just a just kind of an update that they send every week. The lighting proposal on the back is uh, the suggested changes that they talk about making, and. There's, there's 20 lights on there. I, I tried to get you guys a price today, just kind of a ballpark price, but I couldn't get it done you know, quick enough. But on that proposal, I agree with all the areas that are marked in red. They're the ones that are wanting to add lights. And then it's either just because it ain't it isn't bright enough in there or just kind of moving some of them around maybe adding another one could you know, clear up some of the dark spots in the corners. Now in the appraiser's office you can see them notated on that in red. Uh, they talked about taking that fan out and putting amateur lights and she was adamant that the ceiling fan stays because they use the ceiling fans on the end of the hall quite a bit I guess. So. But uh, she still does want to light in there. But there'll be 20 total lights added, minus those two they got in that office. And in the registered leads vault, right there in the corner, they're going to move, they want to move uh, one row over and add another row down the middle. Um, the, the lighting guy was here last Thursday. I wasn't aware he was coming. I wasn't here whenever he got here, but I did touch base with him today. And he, he walked over and talked to me department heads and, and he just kind of agreed with them that there's certain things that need to be done on those rooms. Um, as far as the price goes, I mean, we know that the one light was going to be roughly $600, so you can multiply that in the 20. I know it's looking somewhere in the $13,000, $14,000 range, but I'm hoping they'll give us a small break on that just because of the quantity and just to fall out but one or two lights that can make a day of it. But I'm trying to get it to where we can make a decision on it fairly quick before the electricians move their stuff out of here and say they're done with the job because I think if they have to come back and do this they'll be a lot 
entire bid and uh, to do it. So, um, like Tracy, we were talking about uh, not being here next week because we we're pretty much caught up. But then they'll be back uh, the following week, I believe they said, to start hooking up the new chillers. And if we have something done by then, then they can hook up the chillers again and start buying it off wise. Yeah, I can bid plan on it. Yeah. So, I'm getting a bid by next Thursday. I'm, that's what I'm working on. I'm, I, I've got them started on it today and around my way. I'm just trying to get a ballpark number, nothing harder than that. Trying to get a ballpark number just to give you. But uh, I guess the uh, contractor that does that, for the record, could, his boss wasn't paying today, so I wasn't able to get it today. Lighting availability, if they're adding lights, I mean, I'm Supplies for any construction is extremely hard exactly. to come by right now. So that was between the scheduling for them and then just the availability to go ahead and get it ordered. Is why I rushed to try to get you a number, but I guess I would try to bank on that 14000 ish because that's what they're going to charge for one light. But I don't think maybe I'll give us a break on the multiple. Um, another deal that Alan Langford had requested uh, next Thursday, March 11th at 2 o'clock to have you guys get together and maybe do a walkthrough with him. He'll be down here to kind of do a walkthrough and get you up to date on what they've done so far and any changes they made. Our meeting from on the 11th. The Thursdays. Yeah. So he was wanting to know um, before they button everything up and you know show everything, he thought it'd be good for uh, us to to look at the project. So he was thinking next Thursday would be a good day. He would come down, and uh, then I think we can also go through and look at the lighting, um, you know, to see exactly what we want to do there and, and kind of pin that down. And hopefully have a quote back and yeah. try to figure out something. Yeah. Um, so. I think it'd be nice for them. We do that right at two o'clock. Mm -hmm. Do the mm -hmm. tour. Yeah, I'm fine with me. So let's plan on that. I I don't know if David's coming down or just Alan. He didn't I can't say sorry. I talked to him today, and he didn't know if he would or not. So okay. I can touch base with. It'll him. be nice to to meet with him again, and I don't mm -hmm. know if you've met. I just Alan. talked to Alan on the okay. phone. Okay. So to actually see the project. And, Look at the update that they sent. We I get one of them every week of just the minutes from the, the Zoom meetings. I did not attend this one because I had some other stuff I had to take care of, but this is basically you know where they're at. Uh, they're almost done with these panel or units. They've only got they got one more in the courtroom and I think they've got your office, treasurer's office, I believe the office and then those are all be set and then they'll go up down in the basement start hooking them all up and then they'll begin demolition the old system and then start running the cold water side so they are doing very well um on a different note this morning <laughs> right about 6 15 or so about the time they all got here they were down there having their daily meeting before the work day starts and if you notice the lobby ceiling is not there anymore it fell <laughs> <laughs> so we do have the contractors that installed that the contractors installed all the way to sell with the sub so the actual contractor that set it out the second time he's on trying to get scheduled to get down here and get that all done correctly Apparently, whenever the perimeter angle was put up the first time, it was wooden onto that marble. It was kind of hard to drill into that marble that's up there around the top without breaking it. And it was glued on, and then it was duct taped. Uh, the glue had failed, and the, the new duct tape that the other contractor put on there wasn't very strong. So if you're wondering why the ceiling went from 95% done to 90% done. That's did it tie to the roof line, or is it not a way? It was, but it, the anchors pulled out of the ceiling, 
the only thing that kept the whole thing from coming down was the wiring to hold the lights up, the, the actual electrical wiring. So that was just probably the most great Monday, <laughs> a repeat of a Monday. But they are working on it. Um, we, we got a hold of David and Bruce Hayne this morning, and they are working to get that corrected. So another thing Alan had brought up, um, but at the end of this construction, there's going to be a training session to go over the operations and the maintenance and everything on this new system on how to you know, operate the thermostat, how to just basically a, a once over on how to run your system. Alan suggests a second person besides just me in on this. And I was going to ask you guys who you might suggest because it's a sticky situation for one. I mean, Obviously, an elected official wouldn't, may not be the person to do in case the office changes. And two, if, if, if I'm here for a while, then you go through this once with somebody, two, three years down the road, and you're not very well after it. So I'm really having a hard time coming up with anybody in the county that may have an inkling of knowledge on plumbing or electrical or any of that just to try to get a second person in there that would understand what they're talking about. So I was coming to you guys to see if we can get a suggestion on In putting the training together, is there not a way of a video in it? Possible. I mean, having that video out there that, you know, from the start, they walk through it, this is the way you do in certain situations, that video can be permanent we can have a copy of the vault or wherever else that can come about that. Then you, uh, as you forget it, you might not do it, but every twice a year, certain parts of the. Uh, yeah, it would be good for you to you have a, some way of going back to that video and say, hey, oh my God, this step by step. Exactly. Yeah. I'll definitely look into that. I'll make that happen. It's a good idea, Nick. If we can't get a second person, and I think Alan still wants a second person. Well, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I, no, I, no, I, no, I no. haven't really thought of anyone because I don't know. I don't know, but I understand yeah. his concern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, know, you always need to back up. Yeah, I mean, there's more than one for you guys, and in case something right happened to me, then nobody would know how to run this unit. So, but but I will bring up the video, and I mean, if you just think on. Mm -hmm. So they do have a completion date of around the 1st of April. So we're looking at, you know, we're getting to the close of the contract well, here. Yeah, so probably will hit that. That's so. kind of, we've always talked about the end of March and until I asked them again and they said they're pretty well on schedule. So it's, it's, it's coming, so. Yeah. Are we close on how much it's going to end up costing? As far as the total project, where we're going to find the funding to finish it up. If we're adding, we're adding to it. So that's why I'm yeah. trying to get a. Well, <laughs> we actually made a motion, but we've never actually done it. But we have a contingency account that we set up for like $50,000 for things that came up. And there's been a couple of things, but I don't think we've spent over $5,000 on that. I mean, it went down one time and we had to repair it, but that's not part of this project. But we had a couple of things that... Was it was, the wall or maybe the extra concrete work in the basement? So there's been a little bit, but we haven't really taken much out of that. But we didn't technically, I don't think, ever set up a contingency fund. Um, I think it was just going to come out of the general fund. So I don't know if that was part of the motion. I think we just made the motion to set up a contingency fund. I'd have to go back and look at that motion. But I just assumed it would come out of... You know, we have that large amount in the general fund, miscellaneous. Um, so the lighting, you know, that's what Alan suggested. Yeah, like, well, it's not quite I didn't know anything about plumbing. So I wasn't going to make a suggestion on that. I, mean, we, I think we've been pretty lucky. They've pretty well stayed true to yeah. the contract yeah. on such a large yeah. project. So. And 
I sent you guys an email last week when I couldn't be here for that meeting with a couple things I was going to touch on. I think it's probably pretty important coming into the storming season. We need to really consider our work on that extension office. I don't know how to, if you want to put that out for bed or what, but it's got a, I can't remember what they call it, but it's basically a rubber roof and then there's the aggregate on top of it, like what's on a shingle. Well, that roof has none of that aggregate, which protects the rubber from you know, hail or sunlight or whatever. So can we go? Can we go with metal? It could, but it's flat. So if we go with it's, metal, is it too flat for metal? If we go with metal, we'll probably have to you frame it up pitch. and put pitch on it. Because yeah. you go with rubber roofing, which no. <laughs> What was that? River roofing. That's that's what's on it now. Yeah, but I, I don't recommend that because there's some other materials out there that do last longer and you can get a better warranty out of it. And it may be a little bit more expensive front, but I did have a company. Well, they do have a leak over there right now, and I have went up and tried to patch it, but it's not leaking where I patch it's somewhere else and it's being chased this around one of the pipes mm -hmm. and once I figured that out one day I just happened to go to lunch up town and, and I saw a roofing company there and I was just like hey you know this thing you know you got the number you can you come and look at this give me some options see what this is going to cost and they were looking between eight and nine thousand dollars on their work but they were out of Hutchison they were just here in town working on something for beach Street, but I just I wanted a number that we could start with And another rubber roof is what they quoted, and it's going to be somewhere around eight and nine thousand. So, I mean, if, if you wanted to go metal, there's, a, there's another style out there. It's a, I have this all memorized, but I never brought it back up. I brought it to your attention once, and I just I've kind of spaced it out since then. But I can do some more research and let you guys know again. But I mean, I think we're going to get a hailstorm away. I'm not a big fan of flat roofs, but uh, right. for what we got. But if you want, I can start kind of calling around and getting some bids on that and see how we want to do it. You know, like I said, that one bid I got, I, it's expired already, but you know, if it's something we want to move on, I think it'll be in the last 30 days. So. Well, I mean, as far as our flat, I mean, as far as matching the rest of the buildings with the pitch and the metal roofs. Yeah, with a flat roof, or, I mean a rubber roof, or uh, a metal roof. Put a pitch on it. Mm -hmm. Put a pitch on it. Okay. Then there's a couple of the other things that I mentioned I'll, I'll bring up after, you know, a little later on, but I just want to touch base again on one more, like I brought up last fall. Try to explain a little bit in that email, there's a lot more that's out there in the shed. It's, Dire Straits, it's got almost 2,000 hours on it, and you hold it in the deck, and there's all kinds of problems with it. And when you're mowing, you got to come to a stop, and let the blades speed back up, and then tape up again. And you can spend some money on the mower, but you're putting a lot of money into a mower that's got 2,000 hours on it. Yeah, it's only going to run much faster than 1,500. So, Dave, I got one of those 
first ones. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rolling that down motor. Oh, yeah. I know some kids and they want to come and go. I thought Paul was volunteering. <laughs> well, I might. But, I guess Adam, I'll bring that up a little bit later on. Might be something to look into. Now instead of later, because nausea is coming it's, up. It's going to be a bonus before we know it. Mm -hmm. you pick we might get a better deal right now. Right. That's why I shot pretty hard last fall. I was hoping that you get from that closeout deal, but mm -hmm. we just noticed that for precedent, so we didn't get it done. So then I can start shopping around again and kind of go from there. Okay. We're within the six to eight thousand dollar range on that too. So um, previous commissioner was talking about wanting to get into more of a low end commercial mower rather than a high end residential mower, which is a big jump in price there. And there was talk when I got hired on about possibly mowing other places rather than just the courthouse. And if, if we're going to go with that, I think a, a more of a commercial style would be better. But if we're not going to, I think a residential mower lasts just fine out here. So if we didn't hit the building. Because <laughs> right now the blade's hitting the deck because it's so bent in and then the hole in the deck from the blade's hitting it. So it'll be in the deck. So that's all I got. Hey, okay. Yeah. Well, I guess you need to get bids on the roof and the mower. Yeah. I'll bring my tool belt. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Have a good day. Two. First thing is, um, well, I guess good, I'll start out with good news. We got our FEMA approval for our, we already have it, but I'll give you one. The FEMA approval we got approved for, for the PPP that we asked for reimbursement for, at, uh, we got 90000 We put in for seventy five, seventy six five hundred, and we got 90000 Wow. So, on the FEMA front, that's a good thing. Um, what you have in front of you is what I got received from the judicial or uh, the district court in Shenmue. Um, they submitted this to us last week for sparkling. I don't have thirty thousand dollars in sparkling to pay for this. We spent it all, didn't we? We did spend it all. Um, she didn't put it into accounts payable in November, so. Um, have magic money anywhere in my pocket, so I don't exactly know what how we want to handle this. But it's total thirty-one thousand dollars. But that being said, we still are getting money back from FEMA. It starts paying five hundred, so that's at least what's reported to us. All, that's all YouTube streaming for the, the Judicial Center. Mind you, our cutoff date was um, Sunday, so it's only two months back from from Sparkling. I don't have money anyway, but <laughs> so I'm not entirely sure what we want to do with that. I think she thought she sent it to accounts payable. I don't know, but we said asked if it got paid, and then we talked with Cat and. going back several months. Yeah, because we had actually paid um, for tech support for 5000 in July. So that's why I, I'm sorry I had 300 checks that I paid attention to. I didn't pay attention to that stream because that's when the money was. Yeah, four of them were like back in July. Yeah, and then one that's like December the 2nd or something. Yes. Yeah. Don't know what the answer is, but... Thank you. 
the expense of Foot Island's car claim for five thousand, but that's not covered in the bill. We paid it for five thousand for check support in October. This was just to be used for video streaming. It was video streaming and I believe the cameras for the airport. No, that's we paid for those. This is for you give strength training for remote court for Erie. Any sound system for Erie, YouTube streaming for Chinook Courthouse, Chinook Courthouse, and Erie Media Stream. So I guess have an idea of how we would pay for it. Yes. But now you say you have part of this, uh, like 13,000? Because we put in 13 for the PPE, which was a $90,000 amount of money we spent. We kept what we paid for part of that, uh, that money, because this the fed FEMA would only cover 75% of it. But once Biden come in, he came into office, he changed that FEMA, so FEMA reimburses at 100% now. So instead of being 75, I think it was 76,500, now it'll be 90,000, because of the full amount. So we won't have any out of pocket for the gloves, for the gloves or the um, N95s. Mm -hmm. So we do have 13 left. I don't have an answer, so I don't. I didn't know that she hadn't brought it in. I'm not account stable, and I'm not relying on staff to know. Okay, Commissioner Westhoff, are you serious? Because I think our county attorney is here. If you, uh, that's I think just, that would be. That's just a thought. Through him. Yeah, just a thought. Well, the district court doesn't have any in the budget, probably. I don't know. I know we reimbursed him. We reimbursed them, uh, I believe it was like Christian for other purchases that they had done. I think we reimbursed them 13603 And 400 of that was reimbursement to employees for the sinks. They did get 13000 back in their budget. So we reimbursed them. So. We also have the equipment reserve is equipment. It's very strange that it didn't come through. The balloon well, notice July. <coughs> Number two at the bottom, they printed it on December 11.30 and December 4. I know. Thirdly, with as much as I did with Advantage, they want their money ASAP. So it's weird that they didn't That's call. That's what I thought too. They didn't call and follow up on something seven months old. It's just, all of this is very weird to me. It was weird to me because too. the invoices that come in for Vantage they come directly to my email, and I forward them over because I had such a uh, niche with them and our travel expenses. You know, I had to be monitoring them very closely. So I took over personally this account. These never came through to my office from Angie or. Advantage she, themselves. She sent so me this something. Weird. And then I said, well, or I gave her the form. I said, you need it when you submit it to the accounts table. Here's the form. Everybody has a form that they submit. And then she sends me an email two weeks ago and asked me if we got it paid. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and my accounts payable. So that's why I was like, okay, I don't know what happened. I thought it was weird too. I 
have to hear you could have at least heard something within that amount of time. Yeah, that's right. Because this one's yeah, 723. This, this doesn't. 5,000 per floor? Two. Yes, apparently. Charlie, you noticed it at all. Well, I know there was a controversy floor. about the doors, too. Like, I was, you know, request for the door. I don't know. It was submitted in my file. We actually did pay for Zoom too out of Spark for the courthouse. We paid for part of the 31st Judicial District on the Zoom account. And so, have you contacted Advantage about this? I've never seen this with this right now. Okay. I'll say Kat got it. Maybe that we was need in my research. It was oh. in my, uh, in, in the stuff that she sent over. Uh, because I put it on there, I said I'm not signing anything because I don't have those funds in the account. I was on both commissioners. Okay, so I'd like an executive session on elected to. I have Melanie and the commission involved. Just for five minutes. Okay, I'll make a motion to enter executive session to discuss the job duties and performance of non-elected personnel and to protect the rights to privacy of the individual employee for, I'm sorry, 15 minutes? Oh, no, this is ten. Oh, let's yeah. go 10 minutes with commissioners, our counselor, um, our county clerk, and emergency management. We will come back at 4.30. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes, 3-0.
didn't go to the board meeting last night. Say what? You didn't go to the school board meeting last night. We have another reporter who covered that. <laughs> Well, mom almost didn't want to go because last night mom almost got quarantined out of that deal. <laughs> <laughs> From what I hear, the school board meeting last night was quarantined. <laughs> they had a good recognition of the wrestling program. Twice a year. I went up and watched 2.5 points, Kevin. The state man is close with Andale. It was, mm -hmm. a, it was exciting. I mean, long, about 11 hours. I'd say you ran those boys for the last several years, but I like the boys who watched them wrestle. So. Taken. Uh, need to move to go back in the executive session for 10 minutes. Yeah, we'll say 15. 15? Yeah. Okay. I have to discuss the job duties and performance of non elected personnel and to protect the rights and privacy of the individual employees for 15 minutes with commission and commission uh, counselor Seth Jones and Melody. And we may have HR on the phone. Okay, and have HR on the phone because they're sick. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Two zero. used to be around by your office in that little inset. Right. Right. So I guess just, a lot I just hate walking in and first thing you think all they did is eat and drink beer. <laughs> Pop with cheese. Mm -hmm. Snack with cheese.
I'm glad you were here for K dot too. Yeah. Because that's gonna be a major thing. We're back in session. Uh, no action taken. Yesterday I emailed you the quotes for magnesium chloride. <laughs> How can it be that expensive? I got it. Thirty-five. 
probably the 58. I can't remember. I was, I was thinking about 58. Yeah, somewhere in there. But remember, they had two applications of that. You, you worked the second time, if I remember correctly. We, yeah, we used the higher rate. Miles, uh, if you add it all up, it's about a, a little over twelve thousand dollar discount uh, for the sum of all of it, all three roads. Um, I didn't know if you wanted to do that much, but I, I, and I don't know how we're gonna where we're gonna pay for this either because I don't have this in my budget. According to Wayne this afternoon, we will get reimbursed. So, um, Is he talking about this amount? Well, we have money. I I mentioned the the roads that we wanted to do when, when we met. Uh, so I guess my so question we'll I don't know this much about it. So this project is going to be quite lengthy. Do we just do this one time, or how many applications? It's possible we may have to do it again. It just depends on how much rain you get, the traffic. There's a lot of variables in there. Okay. Now, the last time on 39, it we yeah. lasted the duration of the project and held up very well. But uh, this is going to have probably maybe four times as many cars on it as what that had. It's keeping the trucks off of it, really. Yeah. And as much as good as you can try, you'll not keep them all. <laughs> Did you do it in the spring? When did it start? Did it start in the spring during the rainy season? Do we want to do this yeah, during we, the rainy season? Well, they were going to stop us and we were going to do a bridge, do a bridge, do a bridge. And we said no. We were going to get it done, get the two of them. And they were, they rearranged the schedule for us when we did that. And we were able to get it worked. We could get the best thing to get the rock down and get it worked in the rock and get that base because it, it'll set up like a it gets very hard. hard very hard and the only time you can grade it is when it's wet, wet. when that's after rain when you go back and fix it and the guy said we need to get on it to grade it right after a rain and what we learned from that one was right after a rain would not work we yeah. actually had to grade it while it was raining in order to cut it and what I would do is send like three graders up there at a time while it was raining, which under normal circumstances would only be insane to grade rain while it's raining, but that's the only way we could cut it because it gets so hard if you try to cut it when it's dry, that surface where that nitric chloride is penetrated with aggregates will just break up in big flats and you get a mess. And that does a pretty good, I mean, it almost makes like a quarter of a base into that. Oh, or rock. So. So. Uh, I think with the volume of traffic we're going to see, I think the only one I, I kind of question a little bit would be Douglas Road right there south of the high school. I don't know how much that extra traffic will turn out. Oh, it'll be busy. I've people have been telling me that's the road I use. It's, it's the wide yeah. width of that road, I think, that'll make that one more attractive too. But I think they're all three going to be very, very busy. So I think if we don't move forward with this, we're going to be behind the eight ball. Yeah. yeah, I really do. Yeah, I think we should make a decision on for sure Elk. I'd like to, if, if you want my opinion, I'd like to do everything that's on this list. Would be my recommendation. We for sure need to do Elk, <clears throat> and we for sure need to do Chase. And he was telling me there's, there's going to be a lot of traffic on Douglas also. Uh, I think it'll be all three of those main corridors will be busy. Well, if they're going to pay for it. Well, they will. No. 
We hope. We hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if they don't, I, I think they will. They understand. Yeah. And in the big scheme of things, this is we're talking about, but I don't know what the total cost of that project was. I can't remember way back when. It was a lot, I know. Uh, yeah, we just have to for the safety of our our county to do yeah. it. Because I know in the past there's been roads that were not prepared at all for the volume of traffic that they had on them and, and people died. And it was young people too. And it was very sad. And I think we should do everything we possibly can to make these roads as safe as possible. And they were open on their calendar to get with us to get started on this project. He indicated that they should be able to get to us. Now they won't be able to, we wouldn't want them like all in one right. day, but I think we could probably start doing this fairly quickly. Yeah. Which is what we need to do. So you moved to Elk first probably, wouldn't you think? And I would recommend that, yes. Well, I'm just glad we have this window because when we thought they were going to start yesterday, right. we just We've got a little didn't window have here. any time. So I'm going to reach out to the guy and see if maybe we can stretch that out. I remember when that when I did that read my water articles, mm -hmm. I gave the county about twenty minutes heads up. Shut the bridge down. Yeah. yeah. I remember going to the meeting and they go back and the bridge was <laughs> that was the notice we got. So. Yeah. I doubt that they'll reimburse us until the end of the project. Maybe we can. I don't know. Ask. They, they, yeah, they might. Send them an invoice. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We'll try. Go ahead. I'll make the motion <laughs> with Scottwood Industries for dust abatement along with the 16 miles of unofficial detour of the 169 road project. In the amount of $123,975. Call second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 3 0. Okay, thank Thanks. you for doing that. And Can you go ahead and add where that should be taken out of? Here, yeah, and we're going to, the funding be uh, used out of Road and Bridge Department and so reimbursed. Miscellaneous and reimbursed from this as it's refunded back to Red and Bridge as we get funding back from the state. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. okay uh, we have the dozer delivered to our quarry last Friday. Try to make a blast as soon as possible. As soon as we get enough cleaned off to make a blast, I'd like to have the blasting company in there. I call him and kind of ask him to kind of pencil us in for about a week out, and we're going to do it later this week and see where we're at. I'm not sure that that'll work. Um, I asked Seth to, well, they, they said they were going to hold their price from last year, the same amount. Blasting company, ECI, and I asked Seth if he could uh, uh, update our old contract uh, so we could get approval to make a blast if you will. We used to do a contract every time they did a blast, and then we did a contract that was auto renewing, but we haven't revisited that since 2019. 
So this is an updated version. Um, if you guys are okay with it, I'd ask you guys make a motion to approve it, uh, and then we'll submit it to ECI, who normally does our blasts. Has anything changed? No, in it? no, just dates and names on the top. Right. I think our follows a little bit. I didn't know. I know no. we, we plugged some as we got to their that point the last time when I was mm -hmm. on, so we yeah. were working on. We had what three or four plugs a couple years ago, and the ones closest to where you're blasting, right? Right. They were just south of there, and actually back east a little bit. There's one little. Not, there's nothing that's going to interfere with okay. what we're doing now. Yeah, this will be similar. Not similar, but almost exactly the same as what we've done in the past. Okay. Okay. And this month is already budgeted. Within, we need a blast that's coming for 2021. Yes, right. okay. yes. Yeah, they have a quarry uh, budget. On the, yes. the spacing, I believe their spacing is like 12 by 14, yeah. and then the depth I think is about 48 or 50 feet. Configuration of the charges, and right? Stuff like that. So we can get a whole bunch of dogies out at once. <laughs> well, I hope not, but it happens. Second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 3 0. Is probably the same pressure still there? Do we have one to sign? Anymore. Do we have an extra no. one to sign? Yeah. Do we have an extra one to sign? He was the guy we used to be in contact with, so. Right. Now the guy's name is uh, Tom Braden. Did you need to get a copy of that for him? Okay. Let me get it. Same as always. I'm a little concerned about uh, if we're, we're really hitting that quarry pretty hard out there right now. And um, they're, they're crushing rock. But I'm concerned that if something happens while we're trying to prep these roads, that we could be in trouble. And I 
all we got from Midwest Minerals to ask them if they would honor their last year's price at five million five hundred if if we had to buy rock. We talked to his uh, and they said that they would. Uh, I would like that as an option if we need to do that. I'm there again. I want to make clear. I don't have any extra rock money in my budget, but uh, if if our pressure should break down or something, we're not going to have time to. Wait. I won't. I won't use it if I don't need it. Like they're supplying K dot with their grill. I'm just surprised they, they have extra. They'll be supplying that probably the whole project for oh. concrete rock and road rock. Okay. Uh, but that would kind of be our safety net if you would approve that and we can put lemon on it if you want. I just uh, again I won't use it unless we have to, but if, if something were to happen to our crusher, which it happened before and we might be down for we were down for a couple of weeks, we were in trouble. Can you come back maybe next week and kind of have a amount in line? Just, I mean, just if they had to do the whole thing, we had to buy the whole thing, so we know it's kind of a ballpark. You know, How many tons are we looking at? To really, to rock a road and get enough on there to make a difference, you're looking at about 500 tons mm -hmm. per mile. But that was there again. Was uh, we we got approved a uh, thousand tons. So that's only that's, that's not very much. I mean, every little bit helps. But uh, five hundred tons sounds like a lot, but it, it doesn't go very far on the gravel road. But he hauled that though, too. He hauled it. Yes. Yeah. You think he'd do another thousand? Uh, I guess you could ask him. He he might, but he did ask. Kind of stay up there towards mm -hmm. that quarry, right near the start. He's got a, a quarry up there near the start. Right. This would be a pretty good haul. That take pressure off our quarry for all the rock up there. Just thought. But I mean, if we. the price again? Five ninety-five. Did the state reimburse us for the material last time? That's kind of a long story. Uh, they did. Including the paid, like oh yes, um, what Mr. Schultz was saying. I think from wherever the county starts on that to where it goes to gravel, we're all the way to forty-seven. Again, I'm not going to use this if we don't need it, but if, if something were to happen and we, you know, 
about the women of all camps here who would be our safe people. I mean, you're not just saying for these 16 miles, you're just saying for the general county. I mean, it is springtime. Yeah, I mean, we could use it as needed. If, if we I mean, if we're meeting every two weeks, some, it could be yeah. where, you know, he would be two weeks without authority to be able to get this rock. But if you put like half that amount in, even if we, I don't know, whatever, whatever you got there, yeah, twenty five hundred. So I think the last year we've kind of used that. To, it was just nice to have that, right? Yeah. The, for that backup. In two thousand nineteen and then early two thousand twenty, we bought a lot of rock from the Wolf Mineral, but we did what we had to do to keep the rock on the road. You know, we had in nineteen we had seven. Or get the quarry back up. But that doesn't happen. No. Well, I don't mean <laughs> that thing is it's getting tired. You know, crushers. It's, it's seen better days. So I'll make the motion of seeing that we need 2,500 tons. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Did we ever get any bureau rail hauled out tonight? We've got about another, I think another 500 tons that we need to get from Memphis Fieldfish. Okay. Uh, what are you putting that at? So far, so good. And, and actually, there's some folks down in that area that have been seeing how it's working, and they're getting real good and buying rock for themselves. So. Hmm. But anyway, that's yeah. I'll have to get with Billy, see if I can get a commission. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. But yeah, as soon as we get some of these other projects caught up, we'll get. It was close to 500 tons, I think we had left for, for the crew to buy it. For that area down there, the part of the county. So we've got a lot of iron from the fire down there. And, uh, we can put that on the back burner for now. One thing that I know the, the conversation earlier about some bills that got missed, and we had one. I don't know how we just got it like a week ago, or it was part of our asphalt mix from Texas Construction, and it's in your, your pile of things. We, I don't know. They said they sent it. We checked our email. see that and look at the date, mm -hmm. that's what it's about. And there was also one in there from uh, CFS regarding the, the traffic study that we did on the 21st and Palmer, the traffic flow, I don't know, I call it, it's in there also, but yeah. it, it was huh. not in our email. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to mention that so that you see it, it's not a, not a surprise. And, uh, also, I was going to put in for a, a vacation request, and I'd like to continue to do this the way I have in the past. Which I mean, you guys know my circumstances. I'm not going to be leaving town, but I do have to meet with someone at home to have some work done, and he 
gave me a two week window to when it's going to be there. And I don't know when it's going to be, so I'd like to just keep it the same as we've done in the past. And I'll just notify HR of the 24 hours in advance when it's supposed to be in June. And we just approve that. And it's, it's, if that's okay, that's what we did in the past. Did you ever, uh, <clears throat> I talked to Josie Black, he's the new mayor of Bear. He's been trying to get a hold of him. I haven't got back with him yet because we haven't even put together our proposals right. and I don't know. Um, I got to look at the, the, the funding on how much we're going to be able to do as far as our own roads. Right. And, uh, uh, I need to give him a call. Yeah. Yeah. He was, well, they're going to. What we've done in the past for the cities is, you know, this is that we do all the chips, supply the chips, and they buy the oil. Right. And I talked to him. He, they're actually looking at maybe getting some Joplin Chad and putting that Good. on. Yeah. But probably when he finds out the price of it, he's going to be shut off. Yeah. But it, it, it's good stuff. Oh yeah, no doubt. It's that old picture of Chad over there. Mm -hmm. It's hard, but you know, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know how, how much it costs, but they're going to have to truck it in just like she did. Does. Right. Okay, well, if you can give him a call, just touch base with him. Okay. I make a motion to enter executive session to discuss the job duties and performance of non-elected personnel and to protect the rights to privacy of the individual employee for 10 minutes. We'll come back at 525 with the commission, council, and Mike Brown. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.
it sounds good. Thanks a lot. Because half the team had COVID. No, I didn't.
Or did you have something? Just one thing. Come on up. I've I seen that earlier, so. I just got it, or else I wouldn't do this, because I'm not on the agenda. Last time, uh, I think a week ago, I told you that I had submitted the 911 tax audit to the state. Well, while I was sitting here, um, they confirmed that it has been accepted, we're totally in compliance, and we'll continue to receive 911 tax money. Good so, news. anyway, just wanted to let you guys know that everything's good on that. So, oh, do you have anything for me? I don't think so. No. Okay, that was me to see. Do we have a consent agenda? Actually, we have that. There'll be one change. So, um, these copies will represent that change. And that's the 31000 pulled out for the advantage. Oh, okay. That's a good oh, idea. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and so the new one in here will uh, reflect that change, and it's already been switched out as well. So that's everything in there. First one, the twelfth. I won't be. So it'll be one day, eight hours. Do we, do we have a copy of the minutes for last week's meeting? Uh, they're in there, and yeah. they're emailed to you as well. Okay. Yes. motion for Lori now you have uh, eight hours vacation personal leave on March 15th as presented. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 with the minutes have you had a deal have you had a yes. chance to look them over uh -huh. yeah. okay i'll make a motion to approve the uh, february 2nd 2021 minutes as presented and the 23rd oh no that i held that one you okay know, it didn't get sent until yesterday you got back but the the guys okay. did not so i was gonna give them a little extra time since we're meeting next week okay i'm sorry that's that's fine. Right. No, that's fine. Right. Uh, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. We all need to sign that yeah. also. Or if you just wanted your mom. I guess the white signatures. But we're still, that. we've got payroll clearing still. Yeah, payroll clearing. Payroll clearing, yes.
Hooperly approve payroll clearing for $77,621.37. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes through here. So as a clarification, I guess, the consent agenda was something that we kind of put in about a year ago. Instead of approving each one of these separately, we were approving the consent agenda as one yeah. item. If we didn't have any questions on those, okay. it just makes it quicker. faster, quicker, and simpler. But you can do whatever you want to. <laughs> just saying. I sometimes like to pull it out so we know the amounts of everything. So, kind of. Well, we just when make you sure you just make one quick. motion. You can still do the amounts, which I think is good to have in there. Um, but just use it as one, one motion. motion. But you, yeah, like I said. Find something, yeah. Well, I, I haven't heard anything from anybody, so I guess what I do for fun is just look around and see what other counties are doing. No resolutions. Here's an example of one that Jefferson County used. This is back 15 years ago, but it's something you guys should. I'm not asking you to take any action tonight, just take a home look at it. Okay. They have kind of a tiered thing where it's if it's under 10,000, it's one procedure. If it's between 10 and 25,000, it's another. And over 25,000, it's a whole other procedure. So mm -hmm. take it on. Mm -hmm. Take a look at it. That sounds good. Okay. Need to, I guess, table that. Yeah. yeah, I had a, actually had a lady uh, email me and said that she forgot the lady's name, but there could be some grant money out there. Okay. To get, to get I the think jobs. There's, uh, yeah, there's, We've, there's, I've been approached with some other funding, so nothing's definite yet, but I think some things are are going to happen there. So. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. I did that, and then I realized I didn't get the credit off, so I'll bring it to you next Thursday. Thursday. Yes. Just to revise one of our cows are with mileage stuff. With mileage adjusted, so that's it. So that my system ran at 535 and made jet. <laughs> Uh, could I, uh, we're going to be here, uh, what, uh, a week from Thursday, mm -hmm. right? Could I see if Tanner could be here? Tanner, do you want to do that this coming week? Will, they be, well, will they be ready at all? I think we should coordinate that through Mike and, and Jason um, as when they're ready. I mean, Tanner's done this before. You know, they know the process. Right. Uh, as far as timing, I don't want to pay for them to come over just to see us. Um, I don't know if Tanner will have much to say. I mean, what, were you wanting him to come to a meeting? What if we just did a phone conference with him? Can we do that? That might be cheaper. That way, you're right, because the clock's going to tick from we, the time he We came. remember them. They, yeah. They come all the way from, where is it? Ellsworth. Oh, Ellsworth. Okay. It's a drive, and I oh, yeah. that we pay for. But I know he's on. He's on board. He's just waiting, right. like all of us. Yeah, I've, I've spoke with him regarding this, and he's just waiting for the call to get started. Whenever we for sure want to start that, and then I guess he could probably start inspecting. But I 
just didn't want to get him down here really sooner than we needed to. Well, I think I kind of understand after Jason's here. Now, we don't really want to do the roads first. If there's structures that need to be replaced, well, then the road's going to have to be inspected again. And they're using that heavy equipment when they're doing those structures. So it really makes sense to have the structures, you know, uh, inspected first. And then as they move out, we want to make sure the roads are, you know, as good or if not better when they started. Right. I agree. But in the meantime, they need to maintain the roads, but that really doesn't have anything to do with Kirk and Michael. So, the, I mean, that would be my opinion. Um, they are working on the structures I saw yesterday. I think some of the culverts that you wanted to have bigger culverts, I think they're replacing those. And, and they still have a few to go. There's actually yeah. one on 70th Road uh, west of Ford that developed a hole while they were, while they had the road in their possession. So even though I'm eager with them, for them to get out of county, I want to make sure that they do everything that they promised and that they agreed to. Right. And um, so they are working on it. So, I mean, if you want to call Tanner, I mean, I've talked to Tanner also. Yeah, we could maybe set up a phone conference for them. Okay. Yeah. And find them. Maybe we get a time and set him up so he's not waiting on us and we're not waiting on him. And we have the walkthrough first thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do the walkthrough with Alan and you with that'll David. Probably take a little bit. Yeah, if we look at the lighting and then we go down yeah. to the basement. Are you doing the walkthrough at two o'clock or you want to do that first? One four? The meeting normally like, starts at like two. Two fifteen after public comment or something like that. And then we do the walkthrough and then well, I think she was saying do you want to oh. do the walkthrough before two oh. o'clock? Oh, I'm sure they would much rather come early. <laughs> Let's see. We'll have to drive back to Kansas yeah, City. I might have checked my schedule, so I'm not. It is a oh. Thursday. Yeah. So, yeah, that's I really up to you. I should be should be fine. It, I, mean, I don't think we have a lot on the schedule. I thought mainly we were, of course, we always say we're just going to, yeah. Know, okay, vouchers, <laughs> yeah. and then we get all of this other stuff. But. Yeah. And then we'll yeah. Whatever you guys decide. Yeah. yeah. When do you want to set up the phone call with Tanner? Say two, two thirty. Maybe about that, or get through it. Right after public comment. Well, let's say three o'clock because. Okay. Depending on how mm -hmm. everything else runs, we can always stop in the middle of department heads or whatever. And and make a phone call. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's, that might be better. Okay. Three. Three. Yeah. Okay. On the eleventh. Anything else? Yeah. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you.